coconut, well, and then this is a pixie egg, so that's good. smooth caramel, crunchy yeah. pecans. Yeah. 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 I'll be right back for that. That sounds wonderful from the... I'll never forgot that. Hello? Okay, good. Instead of waiting for Friday. All right, everyone? Is everyone ready? Yeah, we're ready. We're ready. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, this is the meeting of the Cultural and Environmental Learning Center Advisory Board. It is Thursday, March 28th, 2024, and it is 3 p.m. And I'd like to call this meeting to order with the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. Please stand. Here's the... Oh, wait, wait. <laughs> right, where's the flag? <laughs> Am I in the way? No, you're... No. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag. flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> and we'll start by uh, doing roll call, beginning with Adam. Uh, Adam Knight. Thank you, Adam. Uh, Jeff Hauge. Uh Carrie Henderson. Becky Werner. Barbara Hill. Sherry Smith. Betty Simpson. Ellen Vaughn. Jim Adderholt. Thank you. Thank you all for being here this afternoon. Um, we will have the approval of the minutes. I'm assuming everyone had a chance to review them. Any questions, revisions? A motion to approve? I'd so move. The, Thank you. That's uh, Betty Simpson. I'll second. All right. And um, Sherry is seconded. Uh, anything to amend? If there are none, we uh, will vote to approve the minutes as presented. Um, all say aye. 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 None of, um, descending, so we now have approved minutes. And that was the, the uh, meeting from February 22nd. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, then we have uh, public comment, and we do see we have some people in the audience. Uh, please come up and um, uh, state your name. Nice to have you here. Thank you, guys. Um, I'm Mike Funk. Um, I have a vested interest in what's going on at Newton Park because we reside at 115 Strandview Avenue. We just moved into our new rebuilt home. Oh, and it's yay. welcome. Well, by the way, Thank you. I'm in White Cap and I ah, see your house all thank the time. You. <laughs> We're really, really pleased with it. Um, the first thing, and excuse I, I'll apologize ahead of time. I, we bicycled up here, and it was against the wind, so oh it's going to be much nicer. You've worked out. <laughs> yeah. Um, so the first thing I'd like to talk about is we called, I don't know, a month or so ago. We might have even went through Jim about the need for some cleanup, even though it's not officially opened as a park. Um, there was a lot of waste. Now, you're talking about Newton Park. Newton is Park, that the, correct. Okay. Yes, Thank sorry. Um, and um, some folks came out, and they did some cleanup. I would consider it to be minimal, but most concerning is the waste cans had not floated away from the hurricane and they were just tumbled over. So I was hoping those would get set back up because what's happening is it's still very, very busy there. There are a lot of people right now, especially with season, um, who are using that and they're just throwing their trash down. Beside, the, next to the trash. Yeah. Now I'm the guy who walks the beach every day picking up trash and... I'd really like to see if we could get some trash cans back there just so that we can start getting trash there. And if possible, if we could do another sweep and do some cleaning because there's still some debris laying around. There's also, from a safety concern, there's a metal bracket. We've put some rocks around it. I'm guessing it anchored maybe the boardwalk that was there. Um, mm -hmm. But it's very dangerous. And somebody's either going to trip on it or fall on it, and it could very well puncture them. So we need to do something about that. So that's my first issue. And then my second issue is because we do reside at Strandview and directly across from the Strandview Access and right there in front of Newton Park, we're very, very interested in the future of the park. Now, we were hoping things would move a little quicker and that we would be up and running. And I understand that the state controls that right now because of the sand and we won't even go into that issue. Um, but. Um, as quickly as possible, we would like to see that park restored to its original intent. I mean, I know there's the restroom issue and the height issue. You know, I'm worried about trailers because if we do have another storm, if we don't get those removed, those are going to be items that took down a lot of the homes um, that we loved and appreciated here on the island. So I'm hoping we think about that. And, you know, even if they have to be raised, 
I'd much rather see restrooms and showers there than nothing at all. And I think that's the consensus of many people that I've talked to. Um, we love the bocce ball courts. Um, I'd like to see those come back. I haven't heard that they are on there, um, but it would be wonderful to have those back. We loved the um, tiki huts. And I thought we had been told that those had been ordered and were gonna be installed, but I haven't seen any activity at all on that. And that was several months back, so maybe plans changed or never got carried forward. Um, and then we'd like to make ourselves available to you guys just in terms of how we can work together in improving that park. So thank you for what you do. And um, thanks for the opportunity to speak. And this is my spouse, Greg Miller, and I don't know if there's anything he wants to add or not, but thank you. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Greg. I'm Greg Miller. I live at uh, 115 Strandview <laughs> Avenue, uh, and we also own 4545 Estero as our view lot, so someone can't build there. And Mike, I think it was Jim that I ran into at a town hall meeting in August, and he said that Tiki Huts were on order, but that the state had the park area until May. Was that the beginning or end of May? Uh, I can't comment on public comment, but oh. I, I do have a report about Newton here okay. in a few minutes. So. But it was going to be the state has it till May before they can do anything about it. Uh, and so the Tiki Huts, he had said, were on order, but not, they obviously can't put them up until they take possession of it. But, yeah, the just the trash issue, because uh, people just throw it on the ground and they throw it on the beach. They do that all the time anyway. But even those cans that were over to the side – out of the way of any of the trucks and construction against the shrubs of the Strandview Tower, there was a garbage and a recycling can on just a post there, just off the pavement. If they could be, you know, sunk back in, that would be very helpful. Uh, but again, thank you for everything that you guys do. Thank you very much, thank both you. of you. Thank you. Um, and I think um, if you would like to stay for the meeting, which I hope yeah. you will, you will be very encouraged to know that we have been working on this for as many months as you've been concerned. <laughs> and uh, as everything related to the hurricane and in general, things do move slowly in government. And so, but we're on it and we share your passion for what was and we're hoping to make that happen too so our report will really reflect that today thank you um speaking of um we have our staff liaison report and our eminent vice mayor jim hatterholt eminent <laughs> oh the staff i'm sorry staff liaison that's uh, <laughs> sorry <laughs> Here I have. I was, bath I was bathing in the eminence so there for a minute. Just yeah. face it at all. <laughs> not, not that I don't want Adam to speak, but I was like, wait a minute, a liaison, a liaison. That's Jim. Anyway, yeah. Adam, please. I'll, I'll, I'll just start. Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about Newton. Um, I know we will be talking about the re redevelopment, but uh, we've had some things come up that I'll just report on. Um, yeah, we don't have access to it. Uh, it will be. It's going to be much past May. Um, the project was first the berm project, which was till May. And now we pause now for the turtle season and the bird um, nesting season. So we got to, we'll, we'll do another couple of weeks and then we'll have to pause for a couple months. And then, so it's going to be six to eight months before we can do something permanent with Newton. Um, when we talk about the redevelopment and redesign uh, here and the items for discussion, um, we do have a plan to put it back temporarily with some some structure there but the actual you know the bocce courts and the cheeky huts kind of the, the bulk of it won't be available for another six to eight months i would say um just because we do have that uh, contract with the state to get all the 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 sand re-nourished onto the beach and get that all fixed up um so everyone can enjoy that in the town too so um i just wanted to, to put kind of my two cents in there um but the tiki huts are they're part of a, a program where yes we have funding for them uh, we've talked to the company. Um, we're going to put them back up along with some bocce and things like that. So, yeah, just for everyone listening and not necessarily just the audience, but it, I, we still get questions. Is it going to go to a parking lot, just a parking lot? No. It is going to be a um, an educational and passive recreation park just like it was. It may not have the structure it had before as far as the cottage because it's, it's hard to rebuild that, and it would be a massive structure. Um but and we do have restroom trailers coming for now um, because we're waiting on funding for hardening for different things. Those things obviously are very expensive when you're talking about raising them and hardening them. Um, 
if you talk about restroom trailers. So it's still in the works. It's just we don't, we're just, there's a lot of pl movement playing there, but it is going to go back um, to a park here as soon as we can. But we'll, uh, I'll kind of wait till the discussion item uh, so we can look at the layout and we can talk about that as a group. So I'm going to let Adam talk about the day to day because. Can I ask a question, Kirk? Yeah. What about the trash? Mm -hmm. Can oh. that be taken care yeah, of? Yeah, we'll send somebody down. We'll get Perfect. the trash. Yeah. Um, there should be a construction fence going up too. Um, there is an orange fence already there. Yep. So with with that, there sh there should be one there with no trespassing. Um, we're, we we want to keep Strandview closed. Uh, the, the access right now, I think it's just a, a, a we just for safety. We just don't want people walking in and out where those trucks are going. Um, there is an approved. You can see it in your packet. There is a. We talked to the company. Um, there is an approved entrance truck entrance on Strandview. Um, so we can we are able to use the other side and we'll talk about that uh, in a little bit and once we talk about the the Newton Park um, Redevelopment, but yes, we will get somebody down there ever written down to go Thank pick you. up the trash and get rid of that metal and, mm -hmm. and Well, the, and the metal thing it does have the rocks around it, but that is very important I was actually bringing that up today because it's been pretty bad I mean, but I didn't realize is it on the seawall side or the... it's on the so you know where the seawall is It's right on the other side. You know where the concrete wall used to be well It's still there. It's in actually great shape. I dug down and checked it out, but um the little, it's just right behind there, right where you, the walkway used to be. And if you have problems, yell at me. If I'm home, I'll run over there. <laughs> sure. So I also have a question for Jeff. You, you mentioned the, 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 the portable uh, restroom trailers. Um, I'm assuming in, in reference to the concern about a storm that they would be moved if there was a storm. Yes, imminent. just like we have on Palm Avenue, okay. if you've seen that one, it, it, okay. you, they are movable. Okay. Um, we just have to unhook the sewer, <laughs> obviously, we don't want to, uh, and, and get them out of there. Um, but they are a kind of a, a quick connect for the sewer, direct sewer line, um, which are approved because they have wheels and everything by, by FEMA and the standards. But, um, yes, they are. That's, that's where we're going to get down there temporarily. We do have – we had some money in the TDC budget to rent a, a trailer. That was about 40000 on the TDC. Now, that was when we did the TDC a year ago, over a year ago. Um, when we went to the quotes, it ended up being 50 some thousand. So we went to TDC and said, hey, look, we can get a trailer on our own, just like the Palm Avenue one for 69,000. Can we can we bridge the gap with taking some funds from the staffing that we don't really need at Newton? And they said, yes, go ahead. So we're actually going to buy it instead of rent it. Oh, great. That would be wonderful. So good. And if we if we do something more permanent there, we have a trailer for somewhere else yeah. or, yeah. you know, for an event or whatever yeah. it might be. So wonderful. Yeah. Jeff, if I could, uh, on the restroom, uh, first of all, do you have a, a, a little bit better timeline as to when that potentially, I know it's temporary, Yes. when would that be open? We're waiting for kind of the lull it, when they do the, when the bird nesting starts and the, the construction, the, the, the re-nourishment has to stop and pause. Um, so I'd say Chad thought it was going to be maybe two, three weeks, something like that. Okay. And I can get the trailer, uh, I talked to him today. I can get it by, by Memorial Day, so we can at least have the restrooms mm -hmm. there. Okay. Hopefully by then, if I can get the PO in by the end of the week, which I'm are these the on. type of restrooms that are air conditioned? Um, are the ones that, I think I believe Palm Avenue is, is air conditioned. That's yeah. what I thought. Yeah, yeah I'm just it's, it's plumbed in. It's got electric running directly to it. No generator. Uh, we run a line um, from the pole to the to the thing. So yeah, it'll be it'll be nice, and they'll they'll stay clean. And just for folks who are watching who, would, who don't have this map in front of them, the temporary restroom location for the trailer is literally on Astero Boulevard. Is that correct? Yeah, that's where it is right now. I wanted to bring that up. Right beside it's Astero right Boulevard. Next, it's yeah, not on. It's, uh, right. So right. where the parking lot point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, it, it, yeah, it's in the park. It's kind it, of where the parking lot was. Right. It, it abuts yeah. Astero Boulevard. Yeah, yeah. It's, we, have to, we haven't even gone to, to, to see where the sewer line comes over. Yeah. So it might get adjusted depending on where the sewer line sure. comes. Um, but we wanted to put the parking lot back kind of where it was and then have the restroom trailer right there um, for people to, to use. Can I ask a question, too, on that? So is that going to be – so it's not going to be right on the street park, correct, the bathroom? Because that used to be all parking right there, and then the restroom used to be here. I have many photos of it. But I understand that we got to figure out. But this here I think is going to be very – bad idea because i know and you guys probably do too i sit on my balcony constantly and people stop here all the time what's going to happen is because there's a lane extra lane there and they stop there all the time i don't know what they do they get out of their car they do all kinds of stuff which is fine i don't i'm not in, i don't care but i'm going to tell you they're going to park right there and run over and use the restroom that's going to happen if that place is right there and they don't have to pull into newton park 
and actually park, you're going to have people stopping there and using the restroom. And that's a, that's a really good point. You guys it's are laughing point. at me, but no, I said no, on my I think you're right. It's yeah. a trolley pull off, isn't it? Uh, it's yes, a bus. It's bus. Yeah. Bus, bus, yeah. bus or trolley. Pull. And I don't care what anyone says. They're going to do it because I sit and watch them. Well, yesterday, I when I got here last night, I sat there. There was a couple got out. They got their cooler out. They got everything. They were just, you know, yeah. have, and I can take videos and show it to you. Guys. Well, and keep in mind, when the traffic is backed up, people are going to be running from their cars <laughs> over to the restroom. You better believe yeah. it. Yeah. And, yeah. and I'm, sure. I'm just. Sure. Saying, I think this is a bad, bad location because I think you're going to have a lot Where of. Where would you there, suggest in this? I would just line? suggest if we keep the parking here and then we just move it back, or even you know just move it back away from that road. Can you move it over to the counter, over to the corner? I mean, th there was a sewer coming in. I was going to say the where the sewer is. Mm -hmm. There's so a sewer. The, it right might there. be right under the TFMB I think, letters. I think if you pull your mic down. I think this is actually a more appropriate conversation yep. uh, when we are addressing that okay. in the yep. agenda item, if you don't mind, yep. because we will be having that conversation. This is primarily yeah, okay. Jeff's yeah, report. Yeah, sorry, sorry. So we'll deal with Jeff's <laughs> report and we'll deal with Adam's report and then we'll move forward. Sure. Thank, Thank you. you. I'll let Adam talk about the day to day and then we can talk. Hi, Adam Knight, museum manager. Um, just to give you some updates on the day to day operations happening at Mount House. Um, in addition to some of the updates you find on your um, the significant project updates on the um, handout, um, we've been doing a lot of outreach. Florida is excuse me, uh, March is Florida Archaeology Month, so myself and the staff have been doing a lot of outreach. Uh, on the first Saturday of the month, I think it was the third, we did the Calusa Coast kickoff, a collaborative event at Lakes Park with eight other regional uh, museums and cultural organizations. Um, we were at the Immokalee Cattle Drive, the Cape Coral Brew Fest hosted by Cape Coral Museum, That's fantastic. Uh, the cultural, excuse me, the uh, Calusa Nature Center. I spoke and gave a lecture, uh, part of their lecture series. And uh, this Saturday, I'll actually be at the Calusa Nature Center again for the closing ceremonies for the Calusa Coast event. So if anyone's looking for some fun activities this Saturday at the Calusa, uh, excuse me, the uh, Calusa Nature Center off Ortiz in Fort Myers. It'll be a large family event, and Tina Osceola will be speaking about the Seminole Tribe of Florida's Historic Preservation Office at 11 a.m. with a lecture. So it'll be a great event, great lecture as well. So that's actually coming up. Uh, in terms of rentals, we had the Estero Island Garland Club rent the orientation gallery for one of their monthly meetings. Um, and as I'm sure we'll hear later uh, from Ellen, the uh, Friends of Mount House uh, Artful Intersection event occurred at the Mount House this past uh, Friday. Yes, a week ago. Uh, <laughs> great success. I'll let uh, Ellen, when she gets to her uh, friends liaison report, speak more on that. Um, in terms of programs, we've expanded our Shell Mound tours from 10 and 2 to 10, 12 and 2. Um, our March lecture was a great success. We had 16 people in attendance. Uh, Ellie Bunton from the Acero Island Historical Society spoke on the history of uh, especially some of the items and historic structures we've lost from Hurricane Ian but also the structure we've lost from past hurricanes or just past development. Uh, it was a great lecture. Mm -hmm. And uh, Mount House held a collaborative event last week with Edison and Ford Winter States, the Florida Trust for Historic Preservation, and the Florida Public Archaeology Network on a Southwest Florida Climate Conversation, uh, held both at Mount House for a morning session and an evening session at Edison and Ford Winter States. Uh, coming up in April, April 9th, Next Tuesday, no, Tuesday after next, I think. In two weeks is our April lecture series with Janelle Terrell from the Cape Coral History Museum. She'll be speaking about the Rosenberg Brothers, uh, the developers of Cape Coral and the history of Cape Coral. Uh, so that'll be a great lecture to come out to. Um, starting in April on the first Friday of the month, we're hosting First Fridays at the Mount House, which will offer free admission to the museum, as well as all day crafts as well as a uh, story time under the Strangler Fig, um, kind of a, a, a children, family uh, story hour. And then we'll be expanding our kayak tours from just Wednesdays and Saturdays to now Wednesdays through Saturday. So Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Um, and that's kind of the broad outline of everything. It's been a very big, uh, busy week. And then um, we'll speak more about um, other items within the agenda, um, but if you have any questions, 
I'm happy to answer it. Um, and, and the report that you just gave isn't actually what's on what we received because this was from March 4th, mm -hmm. right? So I see you're re speaking from your notes We because that is so much information. Yes. I'd love for us to get a printout of that so we have a better idea of what we can do uh, and make, make sure we're attending those events that you're talking about. Absolutely. That would be wonderful. Great. No, I'll be in, uh, the reports are due by the 5th of, the, of every month. So we're a little bit, we have a, a few days, and then the report will be done, and then I can send it out after that. Okay, so. and I guess that that's the, the, the little bit of a backlog issue, because yes, by the time we get it, you know, this is already March 4th. This is, you know, this is new, old news, but all that you've been doing since March 4th, we really need to be aware of, too. So I, I, if we can get that before next month, um, would love to know. Absolutely, uh, I'll be, make note of that informed. and have the, uh, the April uh, events done um, for the next meeting. I think a lot of us have, you know, uh, there are things that have been scheduled at the Mount House that um, I would love to have attended, but there was only, only like about three or four days notice that I, when I found out about it, and by that time it was too late. So the more advanced notice we receive, the better we have a chance to, to, to be involved. Um, and so the attendance, obviously, from what you're reporting, Adam, is is much improved from, seems like, even from just a year ago last March. Uh, yes, it is, uh, I would say, holding pace. Um, I think it's still below from March 2022. Well, obviously, it's yes. much better yeah. Uh, yeah. than March 2023. Because <laughs> <laughs> um, the museum wasn't open in March of exactly. last year. Um, <laughs> but in terms, of, in terms of 2022, I have to remember what year we're in, uh, Two years before pre and we are uh, still below pre and numbers, but we're roughly about 70% of what we were. So pretty that's, decent, I would imagine. That's that's awesome. That's, thank you, Adam. You're welcome. Um, anything to add to that, um, Jeff, in terms of um, additional information? Um, just how well the, you know, the staff have been out there. And if you, I'm sure you've all been out there, um, you know, with uh, Ashley and Franklin and Karina and Sandra and especially Adam and the grounds crew, they've just done such a phenomenal job of increasing our uh, awareness, our outreach, um, our programming. It, it's exactly what Adam and I talked about, um, you know, and, and his vision um, for what a, the grounds of a, <coughs> an active museum, I guess, or a, uh, a museum in, in the grounds should look like with it being used and available to the public and, and everything. So I'm really happy um especially with the, the effort they're putting in um and that with adam's background it's it's been wonderful mm -hmm. okay, good. madam chair did everybody get a chance to see this no, no. no. oh i'll pass it on sorry i put it up here this is a what picture is that um let's, let's jacob our our it uh oh, guy he, he took a drone of, of some some properties on the island i have some oh, some did. cool yeah. ones too of other other areas yeah. of the yeah. island but yes. he took one of mound house and it's just it's beautiful i mean it, it is it's nice. beautiful when you're out there but even in the air it, it looks spectacular so yeah it's, that's, nice. that's, that's he amazing. prints those at home so Ooh. well it, maybe. if we could work if we could work out an arrangement maybe ellen could get some copies of those and we could have those framed for your next year's event because those people exactly. would exactly you know, oh, absolutely yeah, yeah. yeah. or postcards my, beautiful. my house yeah. is in your yeah. somewhere yeah. 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 So yeah was that taken after the step storm? away yeah. yeah that was just recently that was taken in march right there yeah that's my house right there the yeah. island looks huge i can see no it. i can there, see i have a house. couple in my office that's the island does look <laughs> a, a lot better a lot a lot more green green to be honest i thought it was taken before the storm because i saw all the screen i didn't see rubble you can see Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, we're making progress. Good. Yes, or a canvas as well. I'm not sure. There too. Wow, there too. Wow, that is very impressive. That's, nice. that's a great shot. Yeah, that's a great photo. Could we, okay, uh, could we, Jeff, figure out a way to re, re, uh, reimburse Jacob so the members of Cell Cab could get a, each get a picture like that? Would that be possible? How much does he charge for that? I think we could work something out. Or maybe smaller. I, I mean. <laughs> Yeah, well, we'll we'll t take some requests via email. Okay. Okay. <laughs> we'll put out like uh, my son has baseball pictures. You can choose from. You can get a button if you'd like. Or there you go. You know, so. A button. I like the button. There we go. I don't know if he does that, but we can we can work on something. Yeah. Um, or if there's a different angle you guys would like, he's. Yeah. He I, I can see if he's nice. got a series of them. 
I mean, what a wonderful thing to put around the walls somewhere yeah. where Town Hall might he, be is going to be. He pretty much gave me, uh, just because he wanted to show me what he can yeah. do, and spectacular, obviously. Yeah. But he gave me, I mean, there's angles from all over the island, so I almost have island-wide. Oh, um, wow. Aerial. I mean, that's it's a, really cool. So. That would be a fun, like the, maybe when the library opens, a wall of well, where we are. On the message. Yeah, seriously. It's I think that's cool. not me to entrepreneur him, but. Uh, right. Yeah, <laughs> I would pay for one to hang on my wall. I think it's very cool. If he was here, which I wish he was. <laughs> <laughs> Tell him to email me. I will. <laughs> Does anyone have anything more to ask of uh, Jeff or for Adam with regard to the staff report? None? Report. There being none? Report. Then we can move forward uh, to the items for discussion today, and that's Newton Park redevelopment and design. And in that, you will see what um, Jeff had presented when I met with Jeff and um, Seth to talk about the redevelopment. And when I attended that meeting, um, I provided him with all of the information that CELCAB has already approved and voted on as a way to, um, you know, start the conversation. So that's that this report here uh, that talks about um, the meeting that we had May 12th and all of the things that um, we want back into the Newton Park property. You so there's 12th. a whole... Hmm? You meant March 12th. You said May 12th. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, thank you. Uh, March. Wow, I'm in April already. How did that happen? So I just want two things before we start. Sorry to interrupt. Um, one is I, just as, as the comment, um, I already sent a message to um, our public works director to, to get it cleaned up. Um, I said we'd, we'd talk about it and we'll go down there even together if... Mm, it's getting close to four, so probably not today, but we'll get it taken care of tomorrow, especially that metal unsafe piece. So yeah, yeah, it's nice that the public that brings that to our attention yeah, um, for <clears throat> sure. So we'll, we'll get it taken care of right away. Jeff, I'm not sure our guests, Greg and Mike, did you guys hear what he just said? Go ahead. Oh, you just say that. No, I just said I already I just messaged our public works, and we'll go down um, probably right away tomorrow and get those, those well, issues taken care of. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, we definitely don't want, we're asking our community to, you know, clean up their space. We don't. And we definitely do not want to do the same to our own. So, yeah, appreciate that. Thank you. And just a, another quick, I know, Barbara, you can go through this. No, but go ahead. Uh, in regards to the placement of where these are, it's it's just a quick sketch. It's not, yeah. you know, exact by okay. foot. You know, it, it can be moved around. Yeah. Um, the only thing that, that may be, we may have a little wiggle room in there. I just don't know exactly where. Uh, Chad and the contractors have talked as far as how much room we're going to have. Um, so that might be, be part of it. They are, sounds, this is going to sound bad, but they are being very gracious to let us use mm -hmm. a, a part of it to, to put a walkway and vegetation and a restroom and stuff because they're supposed to have the whole site, but they're not going to need it. Um, so we, we want to thank them for being flexible as well and getting these on there. The, the last time, I think maybe it was the last meeting and your friend, the, the the house right here and that right sure away you. and you took care of that and um, so their access the or right somehow that's the, being taken care of. Yeah, I spoke to the surveyors again. They're going to go out. We had to sign an STA with them, <laughs> another STA. So we have another couple properties. We have the same company that does the survey, but they said okay, they'll go right. out hopefully this week or shortly after and, and map out exactly what the property is. When I look at LEPA online, um, you know, it doesn't show uh, – that driveway as being anybody's really uh, just an access. There might be, uh, you know, some kind of agreement that I haven't seen. Uh, that we're trying to dig through and see if we can find some kind of easement uh, and what that might be. But um, obviously, you know, we're going to share it. It's his only drive in there, so right. we want to be nice right. partners and right. and nice neighbors. So, uh, but we are getting an actual survey done, so mm -hmm. we can stake out exactly exactly where we're at. And Jeff, you might just, you could call Joe and Carol. If they have any paperwork, they'd be happy to share that with all your team. But I did have a question, and we did bring this up in the last, uh, not the last meeting, the meeting before, um, with, I think it's Seaside, what's that condo, the condo complex that's on this side? Strandview. Strandview. With Strandview, and that something about with access for them on their, into their property, and that we were, the, we were paying them or something, do you guys remember this? It's been like two months ago. And I was like, I, and Joe had brought that up in the meeting. 
And Joe was like, you guys need to look into that. So I just wanted to bring that up again. Currently, we're not paying them for anything. I mean, we had parking on that road, too. Yes, we have parking along all along there, which is, this was the busiest area. This front was always busy, and that was It's technically uh, an access point. I mean, if you look on LIPA, there's a a, 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 a definite line there. Yeah. So. Okay. All right. But that is the Strandview Beach Access. Correct. And yep, that that's is 17 basically and 17 town million. owned yes. beach yep. access. And right now, that's not available to us because that's where the trucks okay. enter and exit. Yes. Yep. So Correct. I think when we're looking at this plan that Jeff has, where he's got the parking and the restroom trailer, and again, looking at what we all want back into this collective property, first for us to determine what our property um uh constraints are and, and that would include the beach access simply because that's also yeah. belonging to mm-hmm. the town so we could think about that in a more holistic way right to use not just the beach access but that and the all of the newton park property but exactly knowing where our property line yeah. is yeah that and that point. should be staked mm-hmm. out within the week and that so um, we can get and I, that. I, what i told them is it's it's an active site for beach renourishment so Use your best judgment on going in there, <laughs> you know, but at least the, the perimeter, if we could get that. I think um, the side areas is yeah. definitely the most I important. gave them, yeah, and when I did, uh, when I did ask them and I asked for locates from 811 Sunshine uh, to make sure there's no more electrical or they'll, they'll go exactly where the sewer line comes in, um, that I made sure to, to highlight and send them this, this map as far as what we want to. Okay. Was well, there parking on, I'm sorry, no, no, go ahead. parking on both sides of Strandview? No, just one. Just no, just one. I think just, just right next to the bocce courts, yeah. that, if I remember. It was right? just all along, all along here. I mean, right. It seems to me, what if you could do tow in on both sides, almost double the number of parking spaces, which isn't going to take a whole lot more if you're using both properties, maybe. Yeah, I, yeah we can look no. at it. I mean, because parking idea. would be. You're talking about long term in terms yeah. of. Parking. Oh, yeah. yeah, not yeah. Like right so now. you've got parking here and, and parking like, here and. So, and then it would Bare eliminate minimum. this parking up Well, maybe not eliminate, saying? but oh. maybe. But I think we should keep that parking because, you guys, that's great But you money. can still, the, the, I mean, the, the building's gone, so we do have oh, yeah. more room mm-hmm. for the te- mm-hmm. for whatever. Right. Mm-hmm. Anyway, it would double the parking without mm-hmm. taking too much, I think. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, they're all suggestions that were. I, I have really another open. question, and I'm not sure if I read it here, but. There were showers in that other bath in that bathroom. Correct. And I'm wondering about outdoor, just an outdoor shower or two outdoor showers. There was one before. There was mm-hmm. one, and there was I a mean, little dog thing. I think mm-hmm. you don't really need inside showers. Maybe just. No, it was more of a rinse. I think a rinse. Yeah, but an outside rinse. That's mm-hmm. all you need, and then go home. But mm-hmm. um, instead well, of a big. Fancy well, I, I, I've been in that restroom a ton of times. I never saw a shower indoors. Was there no, one? No, there wasn't. No, not yeah. indoors. I don't yeah. know. Just, just out, just was. right outside. Yeah. It was just right outside. Yeah, yeah. 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 with a dog thing. Yeah. 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 I, yeah. Do you remember? No, there no wasn't shower one inside. inside. No. no. I thought huh. there was an empty stall. Mm-mm. Okay. Not that I remember. And I would but, vote us not to have that because right. of our number of homeless that we do have at Newton Park a lot. I am going to just put that out there. Um, the outdoor showers are fantastic. That shower and the little dog thing we had before was fantastic. And I think that's yeah. nice. <laughs> yeah, and Envision, hopefully maybe, yeah. you know, like one of the, 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 the tower showers. I don't know what you call them, but, you know, you push the button, they, they come out in yeah. a lot of yeah. places. I, I think, did Times Square have one? Not a shower, did they? Can't remember. Oh, Lynn Hall Park did. Lynn Hall, Lynn Hall had yeah, one, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, Lynn Hall. Like, like a foot wash that's, or something would county, be would be very yeah. appropriate. Uh, and what? the county had um, showers from the 50s yes. in that yes. building. Yes. So <laughs> I remember that, yeah. Now, so will the, will that's this, been his store. Yeah, will this be open all the time to the public at night? The bathroom? Uh, do we lock? I think you, they, were, lock. they were locked. We locked. Oh, yeah, we locked. We locked Palm and we'll lock these. Yeah, 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 we locked. Yeah. I thought we did. Though. Always before you get yeah. the only yeah. yeah. Exactly. Which okay. we need to. Yeah. So for the three of you, looking at the plan that Jeff is presenting and the list of things that we want to have back, or what are your thoughts? Well, this is this, this is, is a temporary big. situation. Yeah. Yes, and yeah. I think for the purpose yeah. of this conversation now. Um, we're talking about what is happening in a temporary status, right. knowing right. that, you know, it's in six to eight months. Now, once all of the beach nourishment project is done, all of that's gone, then we can begin to think about, right. you know, an overall plan. But I think the most expedient thing to do is kind of figure out first where this goes so we don't have to move 
basic stuff around mm -hmm. if we can mm -hmm. possibly do it. Mm -hmm. Definitely. So, so you, you're suggesting that we, by, we put basic things in place so that they would be there in the permanent situation, or are we uh, just constraining ourselves? I think that was sort of going to be optimal and maybe like money saving as well, to the extent that that's even feasible. But I think what Jeff is saying, that presents a bit of a problem. Well, I think a lot it, of that it would... could, depending on where it comes in. Like the yeah. parking, I'd like to put that back, yeah. like yeah. where the parking yeah. was. Money, be right. permanent. We'll put up. We'll put up the signs again. Um, it's nice for the town. We'll gain some revenue too yes. that way. Mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, absolutely. And then we'll have a beach access for people, a, a clean, clear beach access, and not yes. having to walk mm -hmm. through That's debris. Good. So was that your thought right. too? Well, 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 I guess my concern were the things that are, the infrastructure pieces that should, we don't want to do twice. So, for example, Correct, yeah. on the plumbing and on the electric. We ought to make, try to make, well, not try. We should make decisions for the temporary that's going to match up with, with the permanent. Oh, that's permanent. a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. I agree. I, I don't know. How if about it, you, Betty? What are your yeah. thoughts? Yes. I mean, I think that you, it has to be, uh, it, it has to go together. Uh, I, I was interested in your comments on the, on the uh, restroom because uh, uh, that would definitely be a problem. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's a necessity. I mean, I don't care where you are. Uh, if you're at the beach, uh, <laughs> so uh, uh, I'd like to see those things, the parking and the restrooms, restrooms. in a specific spot that it's going to stay there. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. uh, then everything else can work around it, which is what it did before. Mm -hmm. I mean, those mm -hmm. tiki huts weren't there initially right there was a little house there with a nice fireplace mm -hmm. you know yes that's yeah. exactly yeah. right yes i think i yes. got a rock from that fireplace <laughs> <Did you? laughs> when to poop it <laughs> not supposed to <laughs> we, won't we, won't any of those breaks we won't tell anybody but uh no i would like to see uh there's no sense in our doing this twice mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so let's kind of zero in on on the parking and the restroom Restrooms. because those are the first things that we're going to need mm -hmm. yeah and i agree and I, very good point ellen i mean yeah why would we want to you know do it again um and if we don't have to that's great uh i know a lot of that the plumbing and everything underground got torn out i mean it's mm -hmm. it, it got starting it, fresh it, it anyway. got scoured through i mean we even hit as Joe knows, we hit a, a electrical line down there. Yeah. Um, so we went down pretty far. A lot of the piping's gone. Um, so we can move it around. You know, we had to do that here on this property as well. It's, it's, oh, I'm sure. It's okay, but I, I agree. We're going to run pipe, and we're gonna, we should maybe have a plan. Um, mm -hmm. So, it seems, so it, it, it's a clean slate, so we really should do what it is. It literally is right. a clean slate. We should do <laughs> what is ideal. Right, good. Thinking exactly. long term, exactly. I don't think I have the skill set to really know what that ought to be, and I think we it would be, behoove us to have uh, a landscape planner, urban planner, Somebody, whatever right. the right kind of planning skill set is, advise us on what they think would work best, given that we have this clean slate. You bet. I thought we had talked about the restroom being sort of down here, closer to the beach, and and close to the end of the uh, of the the parking lot. By the uh, public uh, the, access. The permanent the sort of thing. Yes. I mean, because it really is Towards for beachgoers. Mm -hmm. We did. That's where yeah. we No, down, we down here by the mm -hmm. right here. But that was, Strandview. But that, was, Strandview. That, was, that was before all the trucks just started using oh, well, that. So that's where yeah. the situation is. Well, you've got two things. You've got a possible trailer, which is not going to go down here if you're going to leave it in place and the trucks are coming back. And maybe there's sewer and electric right there that's really close and that's fine. But then if you're talking about hooking up and making sure that sewer and electric are in the same place, you put the trailer there, but then you're going to put a permanent thing there, then where do you want the permanent thing? Are we going to do two sites or just one? And then if, so then what's the compromise? Yeah, and that'll have to, that'll have to be the decision. Uh, and some of it might come down to cost. Yeah. Um, yeah. If we're going to raise it up you bet. and harden it, I, I hope we get our money from FEMA. That's, yeah, that's, um, that's unrealistic. You know, so, or TDC. Uh, possible TDC. Because they, they're the bathroom people. Yeah. 
Yeah. Your They'll, thoughts, Sherry? My thoughts. Mm. <laughs> but we had talked about, I had liked where we had had the bathroom before. We had what, the, the tiki huts, the two tiki huts, the bocce, and of course parking the along the... right there. Right. Mm -hmm. Beside and then, the building. Yeah, the bathroom was down in this corner, and it was very accessible to beach people, which was nice. And also, my husband's bench was there. So. <laughs> Which we'll go back. I already talked to, to floor. You? Yeah, we do. We, have, we, we know where it is right now, and we're going to move it back. All okay. right. Good. Yeah, I'll go Good. sit on it. Yay. Yay. But I'm just thinking, too, okay, in addition to that, what do we want? We have talked about this being a park. Are right. we going to have a building, a structure of some type overhead? Um, it, it, has, it should be educational. And... I mean, we need to have something that's going to be maybe address our environment, address uh, turtles, the birds. The so we yeah. need we need something over and probably where the where the house was, something in that area. It doesn't have to be. And then would it have to be elevated? If it were open, oh, yeah. would it have Definitely. to be elevated? The a structure will have to be elevated. Would have yes. to be elevated. So. 15 but, to 18. Yeah. 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 How, 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 we how have we have a rendering of it. Uh, okay. our, our title base and our, our who's doing our financial part of the FEMA. Um, they did a rendering of it. it. It's big. The walkway goes about where the house was. The walkway goes almost out to the street because of the handicap Ooh. switchbacks. Mm -hmm. It is. Um, it's not. And we can talk about whatever. It it was massive. I mean, it would take away a, a big viewing corridor if that's if if we're looking at that too mm -hmm. um it looked it looked like a cool building it had a lot of yeah. big windows it'd be cool for events but, uh, but i just why? don't i i think um you know something a few of us have talked about is more of a, an open space where we could put a tent yeah. we right. could we could have an outdoor wedding or party i was just gonna say for um, wedding to serve first and people use that for weddings a lot there mm -hmm. yes you know the exactly. chicken exactly so if, we, if, if you so, put up a tiki hut can that be a great basically a grade level those can go. Yep, we actually yeah. are working yeah. with yeah. with mitigation on putting all those back, a little hardening of them. Mm -hmm. They put uh, bigger footers in um, to hold it, hold it in place. But I mean, we did if we get what we got before, I mean, yeah. there's just no all telling. But tables. but there is some mitigation that goes along with it that would protect them a little bit more. Okay. So Jeff, there there used to be some little ones, and I like I said, I'll look at the photo if you guys want me to. But um, the big one was next to the bathrooms where a lot of people would picnic. Mm -hmm. um, they go up there, picnic, right. and they go to the restrooms and stuff right. with small children. It, are we going to be able to have a bigger one like that, a little bigger one? It wasn't the, huge. but We, we took the dimensions of the old ones. Oh, okay, yeah. great. And put those in to the FEMA project and TDC. Oh, okay, okay, great. Thank That's you. Good. Excellent. Good. Excellent. So, um, how about picnic tables and stuff yeah. like that? Or will we be, we be able to have those? Yes. Round level? Those are, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and, again, and pretty yeah, much we good. probably wouldn't necessarily maybe cement them in. Uh, we, we probably could at that point. I mean, they're not structures you know they're not livable structures mm -hmm. so yeah we could yeah. we can do what we want there yeah. so because just like the signs we'll put in the ground we'll yeah. Yeah. we'll do that but yeah if it's a livable structure we'll have to raise it yeah up. i had some suggestions from from the, some public input on it mm -hmm. and one of the suggestions was that an aquarium <laughs> a little a little aquarium if you had the indoor building you know the touch <laughs> oh. type thing, i said well i'll bring it up but I don't think that they had seen that done some places. And I said, well, yeah. it's a well, little bit more You can go to Lover's Key yeah, for that, or you can go to the Shell Museum for that. That's right. Museum. Yeah, we can but provide that was, directions. That was yeah. 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 And I went, well, we can put brochures a, and maps. Yeah, a little bit out of our <laughs> Yeah, we used to have yeah, that at uh, Stagel Bay. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yes, and that's exactly. right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that was a good location. That was a good location. But had the building. Right. I mean, I can see their thinking. You don't have building here. But a little extreme, maybe, for now. So that, Did, that's yeah. all I have. Okay, thank you all. Mm -hmm. So I think as far as the input from CELCAB, uh, from previous meetings and today's meetings, the consensus still seems to be that we are interested, as you yeah. are now aware too, that we want all of that to be back on to what we had before the hurricane. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I think that um, the thatched roof shade, which, you know, uh, which are... Um, Eminent Vice Mayor Jim Matterholt suggested of putting in uh, the view corridor to make sure that we do have that visibility from mm -hmm. the Sierra Boulevard was something I hadn't thought of. But yes, that's hugely important. I'm sure you all agree. Um, the thatched roof shade, as you talked about, mm -hmm. is definitely something we want to put in. That's all on your report, by the way. You have this. We have it. Right? And so is there anything beyond what's on this report did I miss? 
I mean, I'd love to know what else we can put on here that we haven't thought of. Else. Yes, Sherry. One thing we have Beyond the aquarium. No, not the aquarium. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Little Nemo's and no. um, so. So, um, what was I going to say? No, I forgot. Um, it'll come back to me. Oh, gate. We had talked about an entry point. It's oh, in the there. See, I've got the it's welcome, it's welcome okay. gate. Entrance okay. gate. Again, right. it's entrance gateway. Now, the okay. reason why we... that was voted on and it was approved, but when the town tried to get it done, it didn't hold to its own sign ordinance. <laughs> So it was something maybe the council might have to look at. I think this is a council decision. It was. I think that's a variance we could probably slide through at some point. Yeah, I, yeah, I think yeah. this needs to be revisited. I think there was maybe there, there was either not the money or there was mm -hmm. not the political will to get that done. But the idea was that we would give that whole park greater exposure by having a welcome sign mm -hmm. saying, you know, this Newton Park. Uh, open to the public, you know, a gateway sign was, mm -hmm. we were essentially doing the gateway walkway to the cottage at that point. But now mm -hmm. with no cottage there, it will be a, a main entrance that goes into the botanical gardens that you will wend your way through as you're going to the thatched roof area for a picnic or to the beach. Uh, so that was the intent um, of the, of the uh, signage, okay. which we'd like to have put at the front burner again. And also a sign in the back, because a lot of people that walk along the beach are not aware that mm -hmm. the town owns that park. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we need to have signage there, you know, right where that handicapped parking ramp is, yep. to say, you know, welcome to Newton Park. So it's just, again, greater exposure. Mm -hmm. I just, if I could, just a couple thoughts. Um, just to give Jeff, poor Jeff, director, direction on this. I, I don't believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, Given the, the beach project construction access staging area, given the scale of that, I don't think we can have permanency with the restroom at this point. No, not now. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's right. Mm -hmm. so I, but, but I love the idea of moving that. I think we talked earlier about having that parallel to what is currently be the truck act entrance uh, uh, over on, on the north side of the park mm -hmm. and then have the thatch roof near that. And then it seems to me have the bocce ball and all the activity structures, all the man-made structures on that half of the park, and then leave the other half of the park for that view quarter, but also all the natural plantings. And the mm -hmm. and then you've got this sort of natural piece of the park, and then you've got mm -hmm. where all the sort of the facilities of, are, are the, the park. The active, mm -hmm. yes, yeah. activities. Mm -hmm. and, and, I'll, yeah, and, I'll, right. and, I'll, and I know Carrie and, and, and uh, uh, Mike and Greg have talked about the bocce balls, which, I, again, I, I'm fascinated by because I never saw anybody using them. Oh, yeah, we use it all the time. <laughs> but that's great. Yeah, yeah, but we, it, one of the things we talked about is, a, in good. addition to that, facing the, 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 the golf would be a swing set, but not a traditional swing set. Yeah. It's an arched Yes. With like a really cool artistic, oh, cool. And just with two swings, you couldn't sleep on it, couldn't you know? Do, That's a key do, part. Yep. <laughs> it, but you would literally swing out to the to the to the <laughs> golf and watch the sunset. Yeah. And, uh, just just some food for thought. But I but I just want to make sure we're clear that that restroom would probably be temporary. And I would challenge everybody, including the town and Jeff, is that we should go for it. We should get a hardened restroom. We should mm -hmm. have it raised up, and it yeah. should be nice. And I think we could hire an architect to make it interesting. It doesn't have to be one of these standard trailers. Right. We could have right. something really clever and innovative and kind yeah. of, you know, beachy that would really be unique to Fort Myers Beach. Yeah. That could be cool. It could and, look and like I, a cottage. Thank you, Jim. That, that, those are excellent suggestions. Yeah, could. yeah those are that. That's, and, and, and again, this is kind of, I think, has this yeah. has been yeah. our uh, ongoing frustration yeah. is that none of us are urban planners. <laughs> I don't know that the town has a staff person who is qualified to be either an urban planner or a, you know, um, a planner of any kind that has the architectural expertise to be able to, to, to mastermind this concept so that all those pieces fit into place. We're certainly aware, because of the budget and because of the lack of FEMA money that, that can serve this project, is that this will all have to be phased in. None, mm -hmm. none of this is going to happen mm -hmm. in the next year. Mm -hmm. Some of it will but most of them won't right now. So if we can at least have an architect or a planner come in and say, plan. okay, here's, this is the space, this is what we want in the space, make it happen, mm -hmm. and then give us that draft and then we tweak it. That's what I want to see, and I haven't seen any indication of that moving forward. And it's confusing, Barbara, to me, but Jeff, maybe, I, I talked to Andy and Frankie the other day, and we apparently have 
some kind of contractual arrangement through FEMA to have an entity to come in and to do that master planning. And I was just wondering if Newton Park could be included in that in, as part of their charge. Is that yeah, fair? Yeah, I know. I, I don't know about I'm not sure exactly what your conversation was or who that was. I know Tidal Basin does a little bit of that. No, this was an outside FEMA? firm that, that FEMA had promised to do that we were unaware of until recently, and now they're going to be participating in this sort of master plan for the town. But I don't know if this is a good I'd fit to, or not. Yeah. I'd have to follow up with, with them. Yep. I don't. Um, yep, that's fair. Yep. If there is, I'd definitely be. It's, it's definitely a relatively new. It. Yeah, it's a new development, I think. Yep. Yeah, I know there's so many, you know, we meet with. How many divisions of right. FEMA? It's probably, it's probably in there somewhere. Um, well, but yeah, example. I'm not, definitely not, not opposed to that. We are also working with FGCU with some other landscaping projects, especially with the berm. Mm -hmm. uh, we just had that meeting last week. Some of you were there um, talking about vegetation on the berm that, that they'd be willing. Uh, we've talked to them a few times about willing uh, to do some planning. Um, we have some companies. All Native has a branch that does um, at least landscape planning for people. Um, we've even talked about getting a class or FGCU that's that's doing some planning to maybe maybe help us design it as part of a class project. I, so the, there, it's been talked about. It's but just I think, we haven't gone. The I think to of, expand upon that, Jeff, just briefly, and I, I know a number of you went to the Mound House to see the lecture, or came to the Mur I came to the Murph event. I know Barbara was there, and others were there uh, to see the the the, F, the 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 Florida Gulf Coast University folks present. On, on sort of the repercussions of the hurricane and what was the sort of this one of the takeaways was is that Newton Park was literally the tip of the yes, spear yes. for the yes, hurricane yes. because of the way the the crescent shape of the island right. channels the hurricane yeah. to that point yeah. and so uh, that's a big deal and he was suggesting this hybrid berm and with mm -hmm. you know and he had some interesting ideas but I guess one of the questions I had Jeff given all this the trucks that are going through there mm. that seawall that we have yeah. or had at yeah. Newton Park it's still there. is it is it hanging in there with those dump trucks going over yeah, there we've are had a, be... a structural engineer there and it they said it's it's good okay so, so, yeah. so they're just going right over the seawall or do they have like I a... don't know what the direction <clears throat> is that they go but okay yeah they're not damaging the seawall okay very good yeah. Two so far, I yes, thank you. The the tiki to the tiki hut or mm -hmm. whatever, which with the thatch, which seems to withstand hurricanes. Mm -hmm. um, but did we have one there that was as big as the meeting room in the Newton Cottage? No, because I mean that meeting room we've used it for a number of different things. But but when you're talking about educational programs, you know it'd be enough to keep people in you know a small smaller group, ten to fifteen or twenty people out of the rain, even if it's raining and that sort of thing. And a lot of our um, educational programs and the beach mm -hmm. walks and like those sorts of things. Yeah, right. But I would like to see an open structure in, mm -hmm. instead of redoing the cottage. Mm -hmm. but, and, but then my other question is, what was this building you're talking about with the walkway, the zigzag oh, that gets... Sure. You get, had sent is, it out to everyone. Was that the bathroom or is this... No, that's a, that was a cottage. This is a cottage, okay. Yeah. So, and the restroom is, is definitely a possibility of, you know, putting it back. Uh, it's just, of course, it has to be elevated. So Well, and then you've the got, idea. I mean, it could be a huge structure because you've got to have that handicap ramp going all the way, or an elevator. Which or you could have, have that in an additional, and if we, you wanted. And you're getting a lot. That, if, I mean, if you remember, we did have that conversation months ago about, you know, well, now we're not going to have a building. There's probably no room in the budget for building a building. Right. And then, well, what else are we going to do? And then we were talking about a pavilion, if you remember. Right. Right. It was not going to be air conditioned. Right. It didn't no, have to just, be just elevated to that extent. But then that was going to be inviting the homeless. Yes. And yeah. that was also a huge concern. Right. So we really, I don't know that there was a consensus about that. I think the ultimate conversation, as I recall, which is what I put here, was the idea that if there were going to be events or there were going to be rentals for weddings, that we would put up a tent Something like you all did at the Mount House mm -hmm. for the fundraiser. Right. And that would be up for the period of time that it's in use and then taken back down again. Right. So I think for insurance purposes, for town budget purposes, for what it is we're trying view, to view corridor purposes. And view corridor yeah. purposes, it leaves that whole area beautifully open. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, then no construction, no cheeky huts? Definitely the cheeky side, huts yeah. are definitely appropriate, but it would be not a huge structure. You wouldn't be have to build be built up so No, high. no, no, but I meant a larger cheeky hut. Large meaning how large, I guess. Uh, like maybe a, like to a hide a small classroom oh. size, like oh. the size of the meeting room. But Jeff, how big was the, I mean, the one was pretty big. I mean, we used to have like, I think 
and don't quote me on this, you guys, but I think there were like six tables That's under right. there. That's right. Mm-hmm. There were like a <laughs> lot yeah. of Do I not mean, you can definitely Adam stand gets... under that. Adam. Yeah. Uh, yes, uh, I gave many beach walks there. Uh, yes, there were two. There were two cheeky huts. There was one cheeky mm-hmm. hut that was basically cover. It had three picnic tables. Mm-hmm. The along, one here that was parallel to yeah. the street, right. and then they had a large cheeky hut that was parallel to the side of Newton Beach Cottage and the exactly. restrooms. Right. And that mm-hmm. had, as, as Carrie was saying, about six or eight long. Oh, it was yeah. approximately yeah. thirty by forty feet, That's huge. which okay, was that's perfect. which yeah. was just as large as the mm-hmm. the tent rental. Um, yeah. And the, the Cheeky Huts, we did rent those for events, for temporary rentals, yeah. just like Lee County Parks or other municipalities yeah. will rent out their pavilions at their public parks yeah. as an additional sense of earned revenue for the town. Mm-hmm. Okay. okay, so that would do for the classroom that we need for the education. Mm-hmm. That's perfect. Okay. Thanks, that, Adam. That works. <laughs> that works. Okay, so yeah, we are, I think we've, we've reached an agreement with regard to, I'm sorry, do you have On question? these bathrooms, we're really talking about like what we have at Lynn Hall. Not as big of a structure, but I mean raised up high like that, yeah. Yeah, but I mean the temporary ones. The temporary ones will be on the ground. And there'll be a trailer that you can pull out and yeah. do something permanent. Yeah, if you go by Palm yeah. Avenue, kind of by Diamond Head there, you'll see exactly what it's going right. to look like. It's going to be the exact same trailer. Okay, because I had visions of when we started building up. Uh, I don't know if you remember the bathroom that we built out off of McGregor at the park at... Uh, Mm. Off of McGregor Boulevard. Off of McGregor Boulevard. Yeah, and on the back bay. Oh. And oh, the one on Bunch Beach? Oh. Yeah, at Bunch Beach. Oh, my and oh that's, that's huge. That was a two story oh, building. Oh, that's when that it's went half up. the size of the. I don't this. know if you've ever been out I've there never, to see I've that. Never yeah, seen yeah that. even Lynn Hall was, oh. is, was pretty big. Oh, you don't? It was a huge thing, and uh, uh, it was a real challenge. Yeah, we'd have to get an architect to design yeah. it and okay. give us a, a drawing, just to which hopefully, Jim, what you said, maybe we have <laughs> somebody that can do that planning no. for us. Mm-hmm. Okay. okay. I think the other thing is, depending on, I think there's a condo right there on Strandview. So you've got, so if you've got a two-story bathroom that has any sign at all. That's my house. That's, that's why I'm seeing you're going that's that's No. That's, <laughs> and thank you. I mean, it's right in front of you. It's it, right it's, in front of me, and I'm on the top yeah. floor. And I, I mean, I'm going to be like, nope, I'm not going to agree to that. So mm-hmm. tell, where, where are you, Carrie? You're I right. White Whitecap, I'm right in front of Newton Park. And so, like, Tina's facing. house is here. I'm facing here. We have You're two across the street from across yes. the street. And that's one of the reasons why we bought that because we knew this would always be Newton Park. We did a lot of research on it and so like I mean I'm going to just put on the record when we start talking about a two-story building there, I'm going to be getting a lot of people and going, I'm going to say no because well, but, but but just just thinking out loud, Carrie, what if we moved it to the other side of the park? I still think that you got like even if I'm here and it's two stories up I would be much better with that, but then there's Tina's house that's right there, and your their house is right there too. I mean, I don't know. I just think we all need to be conscious of like the properties around us and being pr- conscious of our neighbors mm-hmm. um, before we start building a two-story level bathroom. I really yeah. do. You hey, know, that's a, that's a really good point. I just I just wanted Thank to make you. sure whatever we did wasn't just your cheesy cheap trailer I bathroom see, i am not yes. that yeah. person yeah. either so maybe we could find cheap. a one-story cool bathroom that you could move in and out that, i'm, I'm a wide open yes. to yeah suggestions yeah a nice looking bathroom that you could pull out and doesn't have to be raised and then it has much easier ada access which is mm-hmm. we have to have anyway and that's so, what i was gonna say handicapped people you guys i think when we put up the Burn, I think I brought mm-hmm. this up to you. There was no way for any handicap yeah. to get over that hill, and that was a big deal. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm sorry, but Newton Park gets used a lot by handicapped children in wheelchairs and adults, and we need to be very conscious of that. Yeah, and that's part of the the, the burn project and, okay. and putting it back is getting those beach accesses back, putting the Moby mats down. So they're working mm-hmm. on all that right now. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Uh, Ellen, Ellen has something. I oh, just oh. want to make sure yeah. that I, I was just going to say that uh, I. I in, in my head, I had this vision of, of, a, tra- of a, a restroom very similar to what's at, at, at the Palm Beach access point, but clad to look like a tiny house. Why not? <laughs> at, at Why, not? Why not? Why not? Why not? Why not? That's yeah. a great yeah. idea. Reproduce Newton's seven seats. That's a beautiful seats. idea. Yeah. And we can dress that up and make it look yeah. great. Mm-hmm. You bet. Yeah. Well, again, I think this is all a matter of, you know, <laughs> space planning and, and, and trying to get all these pieces and yeah. parts into this. And then once the survey is done, so is there... Um, 
what is the direction of CELCAP at this point, and what is the direction as far as a recommendation to council as to how to direct staff to move forward with this temporary project of primarily the two top priority items of the parking lot and the restroom? Because am I hearing that it's going to be six to eight months before the restrooms can go in? Or can the restrooms go in now? No. Restrooms can go in you said I now. want it hopefully by Memorial Day. When we yeah, find okay. Memorial so Day so now. you see there's a timing issue here. Oh. Well, I think the trailer I, one. Yeah, I don't the think I, it's not really a timing issue because if the temporary ones go up front and then that goes in in the next few weeks, then we, we still as a committee then work on the, the, the more permanent solution and location mm -hmm. for the restroom. Right. So mm -hmm. then, and it so will then, likely be a different location. Yes. Right. Oh, so well, then the, then the um, that everyone will agree that it's okay for us to spend the extra money yeah. to move things around accordingly. We almost have to. We have yeah. to. Okay. Yeah. I think okay. we have to. So again, the placement of the uh, trailer is then sort of the imminent item which they have right on the front of uh, Estero Boulevard. I mean, Jeff, which Carrie you think that's going to be okay there? We don't have uh, a whole lot of options, honestly. Yeah, I but, mean, I just want you guys to be aware. I'm just worried about it. I don't care. It's going to be somewhere on a stero. Yeah. And, and, and it's going to be, it's gonna be right next to the parking. Because, and power. But you don't it's, want it's them only, it's around too far to it's go It's only bathroom. six months, and we're going. To, we're getting, finishing up season, so things are going to get right. really quiet around yes. here. And yes. Yes. So hopefully it won't be... I think long term, you're right, Carrie. It could be a big problem, but oh, I, I think if it's just for if it's just yeah. for six months off season, we'll probably be okay. I'm guessing. I don't know. I agree. I think people. I think as long as we can help get people, because people love this park, and I think as long as we can get little bathrooms there, I think it's great. Mm -hmm. All right. So let me ask you this: How, uh, if obviously this Strand View Beach Access is where the trucks are going and coming, we're taking that off the conversation, but we have that Jeff has pointed out, the walkway to the beach along the Joe's side of the property, right? Mm -hmm. And so you have parking and restroom. What about switching the parking over and the restroom yeah. Yeah. between the walkway and the parking so yeah. that that's, to me, a natural progression of ideas. If somebody wants to park, they need to go to the restroom or back and forth, then they've got the walkway right there rather than going all the way over was... the other side. That at least gets the restroom off of uh, the, 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 the pull-off. The, the only thing I would be worried about, and like I said earlier, just worrying about all of our neighbors, because we all do get yeah. along, we all know each other, but I think not putting it right by Joe and Carol's house. I no, mean, you guys, that's that was my intention for putting it up yeah. here, was to yeah. kind of keep it away from... I think we need from... to be very conscious so. of that. I so mean, you can either have the pull-off or by Joe and Carol's house. There doesn't seem one. like there's a... And Jim, yeah, and Jim or, pointed out, we're coming in our slow season, so maybe people won't be pulling off so much. Or maybe the restroom can just go right behind the parking. Right there. Well, see, that's what Instead I heard of, of mine. Maybe if, if, there's, if there's enough room. Well, I, if the, yeah. if the parking is here, then the restrooms can go here, which would make it more convenient. Right. Is and that maybe, possible? Maybe we ask the construction guys. The concrete pad could make a difference and pavement. And because that, if you re, I mean, that could be a whole different additional expense for a I was just trying work. to stay out of the way of the construction. Yeah, but I will tell you, you the as much room as about, But you've got that walkway. Is that that you said that's not going to be where the construction? Hey, is, right? Jeff. But they'll go. My my thought is we we rope it off so they'd go over here. So here's a question for you, Jeff. Like right now they come in here. I watch them every morning. They come in here, or right now they're coming in here like they do. Whatever. Who cares? They come in here and they go right here. There's a big big pile they're building. But if we're going to have them coming in here, maybe if we could ask them, hey, can we just have like a great idea, a little section right here for the bathroom? I don't, I don't. And then they're still you're getting here. This pretty is close to, to that. The house than this is. You're getting pretty yeah, close yeah. to that big sand pile. It's going to increase. That's, okay. Then yeah, I, yeah. I'm just trying to accommodate no, I the choose. public and having restrooms and parking, and Joe and Carol, and uh, yes, 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 exactly. put it where the sewer is. Yeah, put it where. Uh, and I'm going to stop the conversation right now because Ellen has to leave in a few minutes, and I'd like for her to give the Friends of the Mount House report before she leaves, and so we can switch the agenda around with your permission, if that's okay. Ellen, take All it right. away. All right. Well, well, thank you for your indulgence. Uh, I, I ask your indulgence for having to leave early, but we have play tickets tonight, and Pat would not be happy with me oh, if nice. I didn't get home nice. in time. Um, anyway, so, so I think most of you are aware that Artful Intersection 4.0 took place last oh. Friday night. It only took us six years to have four <laughs> Artful Intersections, but as I've become fond of calling it, we've had our snow globe era. 
for the last four years. So we're coming out and making things happen. Uh, we were very fortunate in that um, we had 70 people attend. Oh, nice. In 2022, the last time we had had it, which was before COVID hit, uh, we had had 150 people, but we only have less than half of that number of people That's currently funny. living on the mm -hmm. island. So I think mm -hmm. we, we should be quite exactly. grateful that um, yeah. we had as many people attend as we did. And what was the attendance? The attendance was about between 70 and 75. 75, okay. That's yeah, so, good. so quite respectable. That's wonderful. So, and, and I can say that the, the little drama of the day is we had, um, we had spent $3,000 on renting a tent. And about on 2 o'clock on Friday, the sides of the tent started blowing apart. Oh. And the tent felt like it was going to go airborne. And we know such things can happen because you only have to go down to the whale and see what happened to them last night. Yes, exactly. Exactly. So we called the tent company and they kindly came and took the sides down. And Adam, in his infinite wisdom, oh, said, oh. hmm, I think we can do this inside. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So, so Thank you. with, with, with uh, the, 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 the you, intrepid team of a handful of volunteers, we moved the tables inside, the chairs inside, and Adam helped us figure out the, the layout so that we could do it successfully. And we had a lovely party and everyone had a good time and there were no, no, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. And you made money. And we, we made, made money. money. So, we so we money. we were we netted over eighteen thousand dollars. Oh, oh wow! Man. Congratulations! And the majority of those funds came because the town councilors were very kind. Yes. And with my yes. prodding, yes. they came up with with yes. experiences that we then auctioned. And all of the councillors that were there allowed themselves to be auctioned multiple times, mm -hmm. so that the the councillor experiences netted over six thousand dollars. Wow! Oh, wow. Thank you guys. So that far outstripped um, the the art offerings, which were which were were not slouchy. That was that was about okay. about about three thousand mm -hmm. dollars. And we we had far more we had more experiences than we had yeah. art auction. Oh, that's but, awesome. Um, so it, it was Congratulations. all in all. Ellen, you a, worked so hard uh, and your committee yeah. worked so hard on that, making that happen. I'm so sorry about the storm, but that's something that is not anyone's fault. And it just, it lives it in the history books. Regardless. Exactly. Yeah. We'll yeah. remember it. <laughs> we will definitely remember it. Our artful <laughs> intersection 4.0. And actually, I think the one learning is with a little bit of tweaking, which we will have a year to plan. I think we will we'll just forego a tent and we'll just hold it in, in the Mount House. So we'll have to get creative mm -hmm. about how to pull off a yeah. successful auction. We can't option. do more than 75 people because that was really full that night, don't yeah. you think? Oh, yeah. Well, we, we've already solved half of it. We're going to put the bar upstairs. Mm. Oh. <laughs> oh, incentive, like right? Yeah. <laughs> so I think the, the, one, the one challenge, but we have a whole year to figure this one out, is how to have a successful <laughs> auction. Mm -hmm. But I think we have enough creative minds. We'll, you bet. We'll That's do that fabulous. Too. Way to go. Oh, well done. <laughs> It's a, it's a team effort. Thank you. I love that. Was very good. It's very good evening. It was a beautiful evening. Um, so yes, thank you, Ellen. And I'm, I saw that you had to leave at four, and I apologize for not oh, no, no, starting no, no, no. earlier because now you're already almost okay. ten minutes late. Oh no, no, four twenty. Oh, 420. Okay. Oh, there's a two. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you. All right. So let's, um, for the purpose of uh, wrapping up the redesign uh, and being mindful of our neighbors mm -hmm. and looking at the restroom trailer location where it currently is and understanding that that's not going to be there in a year, what are your thoughts? What, what, what's the next step? A drawing. Are you looking at maybe bringing that trailer a little bit back away from a sterile boulevard? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that yeah. square is just a placeholder of an area. Yeah. It's not... And if, they, if there's a way to put it, you know, by the parking rather than lining it up on the sterile, uh, I think, I mean, I think that might be a better solution. But in any event, am I, are we comfortable with letting Jeff and the staff work out the finer points of this because this is temporary in worst it, case it would be where it is on the picture better case would be kind of behind the park okay it would okay. be option one okay. option two Great. okay yep um okay. but this is now so do we how are we going to get a, a designer to work on this for us with us the big picture yes uh, I'll talk Bye to uh, town manager and Frankie and see what they have as far as uh, FEMA's help with that. Um, and then we'll have to figure it out after that. Okay. And if, if I mean, it's going to be very straightforward because we, as CELCAB, we've done what we can. We've said what we needed to say. We've got it written down. There are no additions beyond what we've got here in terms of 
you know, the bringing yeah. back what we had before. I think the, uh, the general layout we've talked about. I mm -hmm. mean, it's just a well, actually, of... it's not even a general layout because, because I mean, obviously, where are the botanical walkways going to go? Mm -hmm. They're not going to be linear. And then where's the thatch roof going? And where's the, you know, ultimately where the restroom will go? And how is that going to interact yeah. with interact with Strandview um, uh, beach access? And, and so that's all that has to be taken into account. So of course, yeah. I would like for a professional planner, designer, architect mm -hmm. to help us with that. Okay, we'll see what we can do as far as checking out our options from FEMA and then going from there. Okay, and then whatever draft they come up with, then we get it back, and then we can fine-tune it or bless it with 100% love and or we redo it. But at least now we'll have a plan moving forward. Mm -hmm. Okay, so in essence, the, what we'll net, we need the survey results so we know what the property line is. Yeah, hopefully and if you go by there by the end of next week, you'll see steaks. Okay. Good, 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 good. good. Okay, awesome. Excellent. So this, then it will, we'll have a better idea of, of uh, moving forward. But I'd love to have an architect, a planner, map out the concept plan with all of the elements that we've determined need to go back in. And, um, you know, like where is the placement of the welcome sign going to be? Those, they're minor points, but that's what these people do. Okay. Um, so, uh, museum museum ask, assessment. Can I just yes. Ask one question. I don't know if I still have copies of what that sign was. Does anybody oh, still have, have copies? Sure I have. Yeah, we have. You've got them. Okay. Got them. Okay. Good. So you know about them. Okay. Great. That's all. Good. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. Good. Um, museum assessment program, Adam. I'm sure that we. He's got a wonderful report. I'm so excited. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so the Museum Assessment Program, which is an assessment um, held by both uh, your organization as a self-assessment, but also a peer reviewer from another organization uh, trained by the American Alliance of Museums comes in and establishes a curriculum that helps staff, volunteers, um, who's ever in charge of both the governance of the museum and the administration of a museum, to better professionalize different standards. And there are different pathways that a museum can choose, whether it be organizational, uh, educational, community relations, or collections. Uh, the one that's most often identified as the first one of any to do is the organizational one. So that uncovers both formalizing and clearly defining roles and responsibilities between uh, governing organizations, as well as the administration, of day-to-day -day operations at a site, as well as missions, um, vision statements, statements of purpose, um, as well as a strategic plan to help really lay the roadmap towards professionalizing standards and best practices towards the ultimate goal of getting accreditation from the American Alliance of Museums, um, which is something that was noted in the um, our previous uh, strategic plan. Um, which I think everyone still would like to do. Um, it's a very high achievement. Uh, it's a long road, but it's a very uh, prestigious thing to be accredited by the American Alliance of Museums. Um, less than 10% of all museums in the United States are accredited. In Southwest Florida, there, there are only two, the Shell wow. Museum and Atatiki Seminole yep. Museum. Um, those well, are the... That, uh, that, that museum isn't even in Southwest Florida, really. That's almost in... Clueston. South. Oh, Cluiston. Yes. Okay, yes, I guess that's Henry County, isn't it? Yes, yes. it is. Henry County. Um, yeah, on the Seminole Big Cypress Reservation. So um, I applied for the Mound House for that organizational assessment to better clearly define and defi uh, define those roles and responsibilities between um, really the council, cell cab, staff, volunteers, and the friends. Uh, in the past, we've come into um, various situations um, sticky situations, I think the terminology gets into in terms of roles or responsibility between the different stakeholders. Um, so I'm very excited that this will help us do a self-assessment and really uh, address those issues that we have to better streamline operations um, within the museum as well as the overseeing of the museum through the government um, governing association and deciding, you know, some of those key aspects and helping strengthen. Uh, the museum's role within the town um, and the partnership the Mount House has with the 
501c3 Friends of Mount House organization, as well as the community in general. Um, so we were accepted for that program. That's oh. the good, that's why I'm telling you all this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> so a lot of background, um, but I figured we got accepted to the map would not make any sense. So we were accepted to the map program. The portal will open on April 8th and it will be a worksheet. Uh, and there are certain people, um, and these can change. These were just people that identified as being um, representatives of various aspects. So I have uh, myself, Karina, so two staff members, Jeff, third staff member. Uh, and then I have Barbara as the chair of CellCab, and then I have Ellen, who's president of the Friends, mm -hmm. as the five people. Um, okay, but perfect. all members of CellCab uh, will will need to be present for the peer review uh, meeting in person. Um, whenever that comes at a date, some that we would work through with the peer reviewer do okay. over the summertime, and it's right. a year-long self-assessment process and a, a year-long uh, self-assessment worksheet. Uh, so, um, hopefully, most things will most museums get them done by October, but we have until February of next year okay. to uh, complete this self assessment program. Um, so, very much excited for that. Any nice but, job. Thank you. Wow. Well, um, <laughs> thank you, Adam. <laughs> so, that was a congratulate. Uh, thank you for the congratulations, but also a warning be ready. Uh, <laughs> there is homework to come There's uh, work for involved. CellCab. <laughs> so, it's for all of us have to attend? I, yeah. Like, yes. Okay, okay. All right. And I just want to say thank you to Adam for putting this together. Um, it's I know I wasn't you know I haven't been a part of it for very very long, but I know it's been a long road. And, and talking about it as a strategic plan and getting to this point is is a big is a big step for us. So thank you. You're welcome. Okay, and then uh, the permanent collection storage. I'm assuming that's also going to be under your purview, Adam. Uh, yes. So this is a bit of a a big topic. So uh, currently there. Are, there's a main goal that in terms of strengthening the collection and making it more secure for the future um, is to establish a permanent collection storage location on town property. Uh, currently, the museum collection is in a rental facility, uh, off-site climate controlled rental facility. Um, and we are in the process of hiring a full-time museum registrar uh, to handle the sole responsibility of inventorying this collection of between 10 to 15,000 individual objects. Um, there's mm -hmm. currently not an inventory or a catalog. So just in terms of the logistics between driving out to Colonial and 75 mm -hmm. and the museum um, isn't possible. And there's also no internet or phone service in the rental facility. That was a hush hush secret. I, <laughs> I didn't say where. <laughs> yeah, there's that. No, it's not that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's the the first uh, goal we would accomplish by establishing a permanent collection on town property. Uh, the next one would um, coupling with that would we be in helping move the town in compliance with state ethic and laws. Uh, state ethic rules and state laws regarding to cultural property, especially in terms of uh, abandoned slash unclaimed property. And being that we have no inventory, the town cannot legally prove some of the objects are theirs. There's no receipts to put, to put in layman's terms uh, or records of any kind um, from various donations over the last 20 years. Um, this would also... Uh, promote and facilitate public access to the collection. So not only is there responsibility under best practices for museums to preserve collections, it's also an expectation of museums to provide access to those collections. So mm -hmm. staff, educators, researchers, and of course town residents and the public. Um, so all that being said, in terms of looking at the current town facilities, that are present. My solution, and it's going to get a little complicated because there's not really a lot of set defined, defined terms for some of the rooms within the Mount House, but the solution that I think would best work in the short and medium term would be to remove the or to install a permanent collection storage 
inside the second floor bathroom, which is currently being used as the Digging Deeper exhibit. And basically placing a door there, sealing that off, having it, of course, locked for security reasons, and having the collections there so staff pin can actually begin inventorying and cataloging this ten to 15,000 object collection while uh, facilitating it in a very productive and meaningful way and better securing these collections in a town-owned facility um, and then possibly opening it up towards that public access so through programs or for researchers etc so very few things would need to be done uh, most of the objects within the digging deeper exhibit are mobile so in terms of my overall idea so I wanted to hear cell caps feedback would be to remove the objects from the bathroom so the uh, magnifying glass those kiosk and move them downstairs and place them where the living room display is currently set up and turning the living room display into the digging deeper exhibit which would better function as a overarching orientation room to the introduction of the property as both the digging deeper exhibit or excuse me the digging deeper exhibit has both the Calusa history as well as the later pioneer history all in that one room and to place the living room objects uh, which we do have a actual list and ownership of those objects as they were all given to the town as a gift from the friends of Mount House um, that's actually the only uh, <laughs> deed of gift item that we have on, on register. <laughs> so since those objects are established and larger and we're easier to keep track of and since they're not original to the house or to the property, um, there would later be, once we have a collection, part of our education collection, uh, to c basically move... Um, I'm just drawing a diagram to better illustrate it for myself. But <laughs> moving the collections into the bathroom, moving what's in the bathroom into the living room, and moving what's in the living room into storage. And that would include that little bed, the chairs, the all reference to Not the, the fireplace. Not the yeah. fireplace. All no, reference, no, the fireplace is there. All okay. reference to the cases. Uh, the entire second floor exhibit, Settlers on the Shells, more than half of that details the nine years that the case family lived on the property. Mm. That's a, this is a big step. It's yeah. very big. It would be. Very and this currently... Is big, this is a yeah, big yeah. issue. Yeah. Very big. And currently there is only one sign of three paragraphs in the living room that actually talks about what that area is. So in terms of educational the, and the exhibit area, value... Which area are you talking the, about? The living oh, room. The living room. Oh, the living There's room. actually only one sign in the living room for educational purposes. So not much would actually be being lost. The entire house actually is... What about the kiosks? They would disappear for a while? The kiosks would be placed in the They're living room. So you would have all those historic photographs from would the, the case family. Would the kiosks be updated at all? They have been updated. Since when? The kiosk Since we got the new website. The, the seated area in the bathroom, is that correct? correct. That's the okay, key. yeah. So you would put that down where the living room is? Yep, and that, would, and that has... I forgot the actual number, but about two to three dozen photographs from the Case family. Yeah. So if anything, we'd be adding things of the Case family into the Can you still exhibit. add information to those kiosks? Uh, yes, we can. Okay. So you could add pictures of what the living room looks like now, take the ribbons off the chairs and, you know, saying this is what used to be here or some. I don't know. It's That shifts the entire ambiance, oh, historic ambiance yeah. of the yeah. museum, yeah. which yeah. obviously over the years was sort of a foregone conclusion that this would always be the way it was, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. we're trying, I think collectively it's trying to take us yeah. get our heads around the idea of such a radical shift. Um, I, 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 um, so the exhibits have been in place for going on nine years, and in terms of best practices with the museum's permanent exhibits, are only permanent for usually seven to nine years. Mm -hmm. um, temporary exhibits are six months. Um, so the exhibits are in need of updating anyway. So we've learned a lot of things since the museum exhibits were installed in nearly 10 years ago. Um, 
So in that regard, it could be a great um, segue to updating the permanent exhibits in the future. Um, but in terms of, I think this kind of breaches into a larger question of what is the Mound House? Mm -hmm. Is it a historic house museum? If so, you know, we can go in that direction. Or are we a natural history museum that talks about the Calusa? You know, are we going to talk about nine years of history when it was owned by the Case family? Or are we going to talk about 1,600 years of history when it was a Calusa village? Or 200 years of history when it was a um, rancho? Yes. So those are big ideas in terms of, because we don't have an interpretive plan. Um, the mission, we would still be accomplishing our mission. Yeah. And as I said, the Settlers on the Shell exhibit already details a great deal of the Case family. Currently, right now, six, three of the six exhibits talk about the Case family. Half yeah. of the museum talks about nine years. Yeah. One family. Yeah. That, that so are we sense. a historic house museum, or are we not? Well, as far as the, does this have any indication of the, the maps? at all the maps program do, do we have to define one or the other great question uh no this wouldn't go into the maps program as the maps program is discussing our um administration and the organizational structures of the mound house and how things are done implemented uh procedurally in our relationship within the town the friends cell cab um but in terms of the larger goal of why i'm put, uh, proposing this is for accreditation, you have to know 100% of your objects that you own. You have to right. own that's your objects. Key, that's so, a key part of it. I'm sorry to interject. Um, so I know we've talked about this, and maybe just give them an idea of once we get that person, you know, that's going to be cataloging, which is a huge step because we need that done. Exactly. We need to know exactly we what we have. We never have that done. No, no and that, that's a big part of, no. yeah. of knowing. I mean, there's... We need it. Not only do we do we want to know and have that down, it, we have a legal right or a legal obligation, yeah, obligation to do so. Yes, absolutely. Um, but just tell me in, in terms of how how long do you think that'll take somebody to catalog all that? Oof. I mean, it's it's. Uh, there's a reason I'm hiring someone else to do it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> exactly. Uh, <laughs> we're talking about a time commitment too. Right? It is. Um, to have somebody go offsite storage and barely have any room there without the proper tools and equipment to do so really hampers yeah a big part of our mission yeah even without traffic it's a 45 minute drive just to yeah. get there so that's an hour and a half of the day that staff would be driving Breed. excess you know mm -hmm. gas this right. town would have to pay for wear and tear on town vehicles no. and also the transportation of of artifacts adding vibrations vice the risk of accidents those are unneeded risk to put to you know thousand year old objects in our town's history um, I mean we have the first deed of the island by the Gilbert family a part of our collection it's it's just right. there with everything else it's in a 10 by 10 room stacked three deep seven high um, so there's no storage let alone proper knowledge of what we have what we don't have what we own what we don't own any contentions of legal claims and as Jeff said there is a legal obligation there under is. state law yes that the state attorney's office oversees museums and cultural property laws. So the town has a legal obligation to not just have a collection, but to know what is in the collection. Becky. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so what I'm hearing is the, the biggest priority is to find a place close by to do this assessment and to bring all of the artifacts, all 2,500 of those little pieces of pottery, which I put together once a long time ago with somebody who was more qualified and I, mo I made the notes, but do baggies you, full of... Do you still have a copy of the notes? No, the notes went to... Teresa? Yeah, it would have been Teresa. Teresa, yeah. yeah. All the notes on the little baggies and where they were. Anyway, that's beside the point. But that is the biggest priority, mm -hmm. is to find a place close by that would work with phone and all that kind of stuff. On town property, property, safe from hurricanes on and storm surge. Pro okay, so I saw that there was something on the agenda of the town council about a possibility. And yeah, what I'm absolutely. wondering is, notwithstanding the, the, the transition or the further planning of what is this thing and how it should be, which 
I would need a little bit longer than this afternoon to think about because, you know, it's it's always been this way and this is the way it should be is just yeah. wrong. It's we never, wrong. We never yeah. questioned it. We've never today. questioned it. Right. And, we, yeah. and we need to think about mm -hmm. where we're going. Mm -hmm. But what if the town were to have a safe place close by town owned to store this sort of thing? Might that be possible to use some part of a town facility should that come into being? Uh, I don't know. Um, I'm looking at the current town properties. Sure, sure. And that's um, what you have to do right now. And then uh, uh, several, so yes, that would be if there was another town facility that was elevated from storm surge, that was climate yeah. controlled, that has easy access, yeah. that was, yeah. you know, yeah. uh, at least 20 by 20. Space, so we're talking about a large space for the collections. So that's you know less office space. So you know anything's possible. Okay. Okay. I guess that was the question that I had too, Adam, with regard to shifting that uh, the um, artifacts that are in the bathroom currently. Um, in what way would that serve the larger goal of storing the artifacts um, in house, if you will? I mean, that's clearly not enough room. And you don't want to you don't want to skewer all of the windows either, because that's an ar architectural element of the house that's important. So, when you talk about storing the collection in that room, how much of the collection could actually be stored there? What percentage? So the the bathroom, the digging deeper exhibit is approximately uh, twenty by ten in area, and currently all the collections that are not on display are held in a offsite storage room that measures 10 by 10. Oh, okay. So it can fit. It's uh, not ideal. There's no room to walk into. Uh, I have a little okay. pathway I can go into that's as wide <laughs> as this table and as deep as this table that I can go in and kind of bring things out and um, I puzzle piece everything around to start going through things. I did start going through all the bags and everything just to um, double check in terms of um, uh, that nothing caught my eye in terms of cultural patrimony under new NAGPRA rules. Um, I was there for eight hours glancing at each bag took me all I got about halfway glancing at every bag um, so it took me eight hours yeah. to glance so mm -hmm. um, again we're talking about there are bags because each object might have a bone, a vertebrae, a pottery shard, a historic nail all held together. And a lot of the dates and data on these bags are obscured. They're supposed to be written mm -hmm. on uh, with fresh markers and updated yearly. Um, a lot of the bags are dissolving and are broken oh. apart. Oh, nice. And our artifacts are mixing. So it's in a very dire state. So in terms of... Um, best practices, it's very overwhelming uh, in terms of doing what is right, but we can only do what's been, we can only do better than what we've been doing. Sure. Um, we can't always seek perfection or accomplish perfection. We can always seek it, of course. But in terms, to answer your question, Barbara, to, we would put those in the objects because it's a better scenario than what is currently being done. Um, to actually have it in terms of the legal ownership. Um, the, the accreditation process could could take up to 25 years just because of Florida property cultural laws that if there is an object that doesn't have documentation that was donated, you can't claim that it wasn't left there by accident for 25 years in the state of Florida. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. So, figures. Th those are so, and you can't really claim it's yours unless it's on your property. So by having those objects on town property instead of... You know, is that room even the best room? And of course, then bring the question of, well, the viability of the museum itself, the larger issue. Uh, but those are all points, uh, I think, that need to be considered for expediency purpose and looking at an immediate um, situation when this new staff person comes in and wants to inventory, I think to at least get it out of where it is currently would be a huge advantage, getting all of those closer to home, if you will, even if it's another temporary move, 
um, for all the right yeah. reasons. Number yeah. one, it has to be air conditioned. Number two, it has to be accessible. Number two, three, it has to be convenient. Maybe, right. you know, a storage unit on San Carlos or something, you know, um, would, I think, be uh, well served. Now, the question is, do we have money in the budget to make that happen? That's That was the that, other thing I was going to bring up. We're paying it, it, for that month after month after month. Uh, yeah. Okay. With, well, with FEMA money. Not, can't you believe well, it? Well, currently. Yeah, with FEMA money currently. With FEMA but money. It would also, so. Um, Which we are paying. We pay a percentage of that, so we are paying a certain percentage. Yeah. I mean, but we've been for paying for that storage all along, right? That's not in. No. <laughs> just since the hurricane. Because oh, it used to be stored in tunnel. Oh, yeah. oh yeah. yeah. Well, no, I think it, there was some. I think it, it was fragmented across multiple buildings. Yes. I was going to say, they were in other storage units beyond town property. Uh, no, they were held in the office of the Mound House, in the shed, the kayak shed. Yes. And uh, in mixing with the retail of at Town Hall and mix in with the financial records at Town Hall. Oh. Earlier than that, there were other storage yeah, there, facilities. Uh, this yeah. was years ago. Yeah. They were yeah. in... They were at Newton yeah. for a while. I yeah. Yeah. But to what? address what Jim said, yes, if if there is a, a, a new building that's uh, perhaps a lot newer than 1921, <laughs> like the Mount House building, <laughs> that would be preferred. Yes. Uh, I made these plans before uh, that was uh, in... Thought, we all knew about it. <laughs> so, in fairness to you, Adam, uh, this happened yesterday. So, you know. yeah. I know, and I, I think it, and it makes it now even oh, more exciting and relevant, mm -hmm. given the current yes, situation that we're in. Mm -hmm. So, I think that would be certainly value added. Mm -hmm. yes. I, I would like to ask if the town fathers would agree to, if that worked out, and there was a possibility, agree to storing and having this. What do you call that person? Access. access the museum registrar. Yeah, the museum registrar, and, you know, working on that site and being, I mean, that certainly is a big town thing, but. Yeah, I, Becky, I, I can't imagine they would would Thank not you. be open to it, but I just don't think they've even had. You have, can't, you have, can't go there Yeah, yet. they haven't laid out the whole right. Right. Mm -hmm. right. new facility yet, because obviously it's got to get approved and then. But it, but it, from what I'm told, the building is in excellent shape yes. and it's it will be convertible relatively quickly. To a functional town hall. Yeah. Well, it's brilliant. Oh, nice. It's yeah. a great idea. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay, obviously you don't need a vote from us. Thank you no. for sharing that mm -hmm. uh, new information. Our heads are still spinning. Yeah. I don't yeah. know about oh, you I because knew. we always yeah, have this preconceived notion about how the museum always would be. And if I could just add, um, the, that process of moving things around, I can't accomplish in one week. Sure. So it's a very quick removal. But it would also be a quick reinstallation to alleviate any fears or concerns. What could what could be removed could also be put back very quickly what in terms of that temper. Okay. I'm just curious about the bathtub. What are you going to do about the bathtub? Uh, since the bathtub, I don't. Again, I don't have any records of anything. Uh, there's no documentation on anything. Um, there's not. Well, no, the, yeah. the, that's not the original bathtub. No, but no, she yeah, had to no. go to a it state is, in it is the plumbed. northwest to get it from Montana. <laughs> Montana. That's if, if you could you. share that information with me, that'd be helpful. Um, but removing, I was looking at it yesterday with the historic maintenance worker, um, and the removal of the bath plug, it looks partially pl uh, plumbed into the existing plumbing. Uh, the pipes go quite far, so it, oh. removing the bathtub would cause a lot of issues. And since the bathtub, it's... It's complicated, but it's a part of the co educational collection, mm -hmm. like the living room furniture. So it's not original to the house, but since right. the town bought it for exhibit purposes, exactly, um, it's a it's a collection. But the of course, we removing it would also risk damaging the historic structure, which is it also a collection. Um, the building itself is a collection, and what is and what isn't original isn't very clearly defined. But we basically leave the bathtub. And we would remove the sink because the sink is just bracketed mm -hmm. to the wall. The plumbing's been yeah. cut already yeah. to the sink. So basically the bathtub would just be a, um, a nice cuppy area for supplies. Oh, okay. Um, Ed, what, what would we do about our um, historical <coughs> designation? The house has been... The you know, historic landmark the historical designation. landmark designation. Would mm -hmm. that be affected? No, none at all. None at all? No, just like having a gift shop and the current exhibits didn't just get rid of the historic okay. designation. Okay. And, and Adam and I have been talking of talks since, you know, 
we've made this this change um, is rotating exhibits and how museums rotate exhibits to get new people in and get get some fresh ideas. So that's just that's another part of of rotating this out a little bit to get some fresh ideas uh, in there as well. So uh, not not only that, but potentially bringing exhibits out into the public and doing that because we're we're looking at more outreach. And that again becomes a budget issue to the extent that the town is. Uh, is uh, supportive financially of making those rotating exhibits happen mm -hmm. and if the intent is for us to do that every seven years or even ten years then there's got to be money and substantial money set aside for that effort mm -hmm. and is the town willing to do that with tax dollars and that's an important question because at one point you know there wasn't even support for doing what we ended up doing, right, Betty? That's true. There was right. no support, oh, exactly. and we got that through, and that was, it was like did. becoming incorporated. It was the same kind of argument. But again, the intent was that the entire operation of the museum would be handed over to a foundation, which would be a private 501c3, for just these kinds of conversations to, you know, get the town out of the running of a museum which is substantial and then having a foundation run it obviously uh, the town continues to support the museum which I'm so grateful for and certainly we're still in our infant stage comparatively but I think going forward those are questions that you know will come up and Barbara would you make that statement and I'm sure there's substantial costs in switching the exhibits and, and rotating them but doesn't that potentially also generate new revenue and new customers and repeat getting Absolutely. people to come again? Yeah, so it could be almost Absolutely. revenue neutral or even make be profitable. Mm, right. Not Abs profitable, but you know what I mean. Absolutely. Be a pl on the plus Absolutely. side. Absolutely. Maybe. Yeah. You know, it, <laughs> yeah. it definitely brings new people in. It, it yeah. refreshes the, right. the look of the right. museum mm -hmm. and, and yeah, generates new interest. Mm -hmm. So absolutely. And so if that can be, and if that can be um, you know, rationalized mm -hmm. financially, then absolutely a win-win okay so thank you for that Adam that it was a lot to take in mm -hmm. and certainly more food for thought I don't think we can make Are any movie next week anytime soon <laughs> um, week and a half. yeah um, I mean I'd like to hear I think we need to I mean it I'm old it takes me a long time to come forward and think about new things but it is it's a fascinating idea mm -hmm. and but I think when we talk about a strategic plan which we have we need to have coming up that's certainly a part of how we figure out where we're going to go and I and I do wonder if in the meanwhile while this huge new project might be coming through if what you need is to put the stuff in the bathroom of the mound house, push everything over to the side, I will say that being there one afternoon a week, it's the puzzles that get the most used. People do not sit down and look at those kiosks because they're, uh, they're a little boring and the, the, it's faded and there's not much new information. Um, you know, and just, I don't know what could be stored or can it be temporary un until, you know, if, if it's... If the need is imminent to get the stuff out of the Colonial 75 thing, yep. Heidi Hall. Uh, the puzzle, everything in the, the bathroom, the digging zebra, would be moved so that it would include the puzzles. No, but I'm, no, well, I'm saying if you really need to put stuff in there while we're thinking of how we're going to go forward with this thing, and yes, do we want to eliminate the living room, which... And have puzzles and digging deep. I don't see people doing digging deeper very much. They don't look at those things very often. They walk in there, they read the Delisle sign, they look and they play with the puzzles. And if that was just used as storage until we can come up with a real big plan in case something else might happen and open up rather than doing away with, uh, you know, the living room, I guess. Oh, I have to I think about that. Mm -hmm. So you're saying you're suggesting it, yes. to just put the digging yes. deeper exhibit mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that just talks about the archaeology. Just push them off to the side, load everything in there until we can, if it needs yeah. to be done within the next two months. If you're not having to move the the bathtub, and if you can move the things that are easily movable out, so that you can bring the rest of the or just leave them there. There's tables and take those 
magnifying things down and pile yeah, stuff on the kiosks. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but if that can be moved fairly um, easily and temporarily just to get the conversation of moving the artifacts into that space so that then you, the new staff person can begin to work, that makes sense to me. But if there's ever an opportunity that we can move these things ultimately to a new town hall that can open that up, that really then gives us the opportunity to figure out what that exhibit space could be better used for. Yeah, yeah. And when and do we have a new person yet? Um, I'm sorry. Do we have a new person yet? <laughs> uh, no. The it's we're accepting well, applications currently. Okay. Okay. Right now we have, I think, 14 applications for it. Wow. Wow. Uh, that's awesome. That's 35. Well, I'm sorry, 35. Oh I was thinking of a gosh. different 35. So we are, <laughs> we are looking at hiring pretty soon. Okay, so once you hire, then it becomes then, you need then. to do something. Okay. Yeah, yes. so okay. if I'm understanding correctly, your opposition is the removal of the living room. Yeah, right, right now. now. Just, <laughs> just at first thought. <laughs> Today. Okay. Today. You Today, yeah. And I, I'd rather see stuff, you know, I don't, you can put puzzles down in the corner of the living room and, and on the porch or something and then mm. just use, push the kiosks over. I don't, do you have to dig into the floor to wire those kiosks? There's already existing uh, outlets in the living room. Okay. That's where the lamps plug in. There's not enough light in that room. That's, no. that's another, that up, that's right? another issue because, okay. you know, yeah, there's not I, modern exhibit lighting in the no, living room exhibit. Terrible. Um, and they so, wanted to retain that sort of more hus you know historic ambiance and that space. Well, it was not really used at night ever. So well, there you go. That's that was the other issue. Exactly. That is a big problem. Yeah, I I, I propose moving the living room because, in my professional opinion, it has less educational value than of the digging deeper exhibit. Um, when you first walk in, it starts with, the case when we built a Tudor addition to the bathroom or built a Tudor edition or a Tudor edition yeah. and built the living room. There's no introduction, there's no welcoming. So in terms of the wayfinding and the exhibit layout from a Have museum perspective me? without staff members or volunteers. Did, well, well how yeah, about the orientation right. room? Uh, which Isn't we have just doesn't the orientation room sort of set the yeah. stage historically and chronologically? So uh, with the orientation gallery, there are two timelines and there is a video that is yeah on its last leg. I yes. think Sherry and Becky will speak yes. to that. <laughs> the orientation video is, it's been played every day for 10 years, oh, so wow. it's skipping quite a bit. Times. But yeah. there are copies, right? Not that I have found. <laughs> <laughs> we, um, we need a new one. It is in need of update anyway, yeah, you know, is. just like the underground museum, it, it was washed away, but we were already talking about upgrading that exhibit anyway. Right. Anyway, yeah. Um, show your weekly videos. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Those are great. Thank you. Um, uh, so yeah, I I propose moving the living room since, again, currently three out of six exhibits talk about the Case family, and only two exhibits talk about the Calusa. Mm -hmm. If we remove the digging deeper exhibit, we'd be down to one exhibit speaking about the Calusa, who built the mound. The room upstairs. Oh, that, yeah, that that's the one room. And the underground. That's. Yeah, oh, that's yeah. not really an exhibit, really, right now, because it's just a room. Oh, well. This, these are big issues. These are big these issues. These are fundamental issues to how we perceive the museum to be. And it se seems to me, at the time it was planned and implemented, that it made total sense. You had the historic context for the historic house. Mm -hmm. Then you went in to watch the video, and then you went up to see the Calusas, and you saw the Cuban. I mean, so it may not have been the first impression. So I get what you're saying, Adam. Too. But the, the story, I thought, was well told. Uh, and again, that was primarily because we're talking about a house. And there is confusion. Well, wait a minute. Here's a historic house. And somebody who doesn't understand any but anything about the Calusa, well, did the Calusa build the house? The house. You know, that's a common mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. misconception. So I yes. can understand where that yeah. confusion lies. Uh, but again, you know, moving everything around and reconfiguring that whole concept is is um, is something that we can't address today. Let's mm -hmm. just kind of give that some thought. Uh, I think this is all about discussion. I don't see that there's a board mm -hmm. vote no. here that we can actually even make. When we do, when we do have an agenda set up and that there's a, been considerable discussion and we need to make a vote on it, 
then we need to get that information in hand in advance in so advance. that we can look it over mm -hmm. carefully and then go forward. Um, so what you presented is certainly food for thought. I think we have to kind of mull this over. I think so. And again, this to us collectively was why we have a strategic plan because yes, we're going to do this in six months. Yes, we're going to do this in 12 yeah. months or yeah. this is a long-term goal once we find funding and you know all of that fit into place. But that strategic plan has not been updated in two years. It's a problem. And we can't have all of this come to us and make any board action on it. So but I, I do have to say that collections was part of our original strategic plan, which is part of the mm -hmm. conversation right now. The, the what? The, the collections? Uh, sure. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, no, it's, it's definitely mm -hmm. part of the conversation. Yeah. It's just moving the uh, collection, moving the exhibits around. I think also to update the exhibits where it was in the strategic mm -hmm. plan. Yes. So this would be updating the exhibits. Do we have exhibits. stuff to update the exhibit or do we have to buy it? Uh, <laughs> to update the exhibit in terms of uh, like signage the... and exhibit cases, uh, again, like what Barbara says, money. Well, yeah. <laughs> so uh, anything's possible. And um, I have spoken to the friends of Mount House who have, again, pledged their support for um, giving the Mount House money uh, specifically for the collections and also have discussed um, potentially uh, capital campaigns. So those are options in the future. Yeah. So I think normally the, the yes, and here you have on page eight, it says yes, the collections will be rotated on display when archeological research is completed, right? And we haven't yet that done, we haven't done that yet. And then, uh, and the stabilization of the uh, underground exhibit will be developed. And then collecting, uh, seeking a collecting intern, which now will be a full-time staff person. Uh, but that said, um, you know, normally what happens is that, you know, this comes before us, we re make recommendations, and then it goes to council. But the question is, have you all developed the budget on what those rate rotating exhibitions will cost? So you guys have to come up with what the collections will look like, where they'll go, how much money it will be to do that. And then that's presented to council to say, well, you know, we're not going to put that in our budget for next year. But at least that's something that a long term goal. But right now, that can't be our decision to make. So I think um, there's, again, that strategic plan will say, OK, yes, we want a, a rotating exhibitions. Is that in the budget? Well, when can it be in the budget? And when can we make that happen? Uh, so if moving all of this around is going to cost X number of dollars, we can't, you don't even know. I mean, you don't. It, 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 would, it wouldn't cost anything to move the things around except for labor. Except labor. OK. Correct. Uh, the temporary you're talking mm -hmm. about moving for collection storage the collection storage yeah. into the bathroom area correct it, and it ended up costing our lot uh, us a lot more if the collections were still in storage yeah yeah well i think yeah. we'll all agree that we don't want we need that to collection do something to be at, right. at the at the uh at the uh colonial, uh, colonial property hole. yeah for all the <laughs> right reasons and i don't have any problem do you all with having a problem with moving the collections out of that area the question is, will all of those <laughs> artifacts fit into that bathroom? Yes. You said well, that they was fit 10 in by if 10, you don't move everything out. And no. Well, where are you going to put the living room stuff? So the living room would have to be placed into that off-site storage, but that's... Into the off-site storage? In the colonial, the hidey hole. So oh, we still have to pay for it. Just we, would, we, would, we would probably still need it because... So it would be, instead of storing 15,000 objects in boxes, it would be storing eight objects that can quickly be accessed. And it, again, it's already cataloged. Although we do have extra storage around. With there, We're getting more for Bay Oaks. We're getting more. Yeah. Yeah. So there could possibly go there. God, don't anybody but, tell Seal. But moving, but again, moving uh, eight furniture items is much easier logistically and in terms of... Um, security reasons than moving 15,000 objects in baggies that we don't know what's where. Jim, I'd love that, your way in on this. Well, with respect to the, the, the perspective uh, a new town hall property, I'm, it's preliminary, but I'm advised that it, we could potentially have that open and running in six to nine months. So, so, so it, it's, it's, if time is of the essence, 
it, it is an option, but probably not a practical option for six to nine months. Mm -hmm. So if that helps you at all, but I do, it does. I yeah, so. yeah, I think you know. It sounds to me. I'm feeling the same thing from you too, Betty. This is moving mm -hmm. too quickly. And if there's if there can be a reasonable solution in six to nine months, when we'll know more if this existing building is makes sense for the town, then that opens great possibilities for us. And yes, I know it's not convenient. But if it means that we still have to rent that colonial rental, it's sort of, I know, 15,000 objects versus 10 objects. I get that uh, logistically. But um, I think what we'll do is wait. What do you think, Betty? I'd love your, you mean in terms of like moving the artifacts out of storage, you want it to go into the bathroom? I would rather lose the bathroom right now than the living room. I, feel I mean, what I don't mm -hmm. see much interest. I mean, I see kids coming in and you look, say, that's their TV over there, that little stereopticon. And then, you know, I mean, and that's probably an emotional thing with me, and I think I can get over it. Mm -hmm. But I don't see people, they don't sit down at the kiosk. That's good to know. Um, that's good. Right. That's very, kiosk, they, very they, they do the puzzles, which, which were wonderful yeah. things and can be... Right put elsewhere, yeah. could the storage of the artifacts be done, you know, with, with what is in that room and pushed to the side and used, you know, put covered up well and put boards across it and made shelves or something, um, but, but not to be a permanent, but, but not as a permanent storage solution for the artifacts, but temporary until, and then wherever town hall is going to be, require that they preserve space for the artifacts, which are an important thing. But temporarily, it would get your new person working with the artifacts in somewhat of a, maybe half of them could be stacked up high and more desk space or, or, or something. And I, and I hate to do this, but of course, the, this is even the new town hall, is, as great as it could be, it's still a variable. I don't know if they'll have room, but they very well may. I just, it's too, too early to know. Mm -hmm. yeah. But, and the, and you're absolutely right. Yeah. But I don't like seeing the shuffling with the artifacts, though. No, too. I don't. Either. I mean, I wish we could find this is what we're going to do, mm -hmm. rather than you know moving go. to another storage or half here or half there. I'd like to see. I mean, could the one could the actual collections part almost be in view of the public when they're coming? Look, this is how they're cataloging mm -hmm. it. This is a cool thing. This it's is really how it works. Chaos. Put a half door in that doorway. Right. You That'd know what I mean? Like, I know, I know you're putting out. somebody, but we're all on display. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hall, you know, we're <laughs> yeah, anybody right. walking yeah. anyway. But I mean, that might be a cool almost exhibit to exactly. see. It's like, like oh my gosh, like, look at what they're doing. Look what they found. I, like um, I, I was at, at in D.C. at George Washington's house, and they found a spoon while I was there, and they were cataloging it, and I was like, oh, my gosh, this is cool. Like, it's an actual thing. It's new. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. so putting that up in that room. Um, the, Smith, yeah, the Smithsonian yeah. has its yeah. own sort of attic, if you will, that people are fascinated by, and they just mm -hmm. go and just look at miscellaneous things that are... Mm -hmm. I mean, and then if there's somebody there could explain, hey, this is a little piece of pottery that I'm working on right now, and here's what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. Yeah. I think people would find that fascinating. Or these yeah. aren't the yeah, only things we have found. Yeah. Look at all these things that we have, we need right. to catalog. And yeah, yeah that, so uh, it, it'd be to me that would be kind of a cool experience. And you know, going to museums with a nine-year-old, you know, I can attest that they want hands-on things and things they mm -hmm. can see. And mm -hmm. but so. who? Uh, What's the usership? I mean, we do have a lot of school kids that come through, but we also have yeah, a lot of adults that come through. So what do we want to showcase on, on exhibits about the property in the house? I guess that's that's right. what it comes down to. Right. Yeah. I think that needs more than an afternoon. Mm -hmm. I think so, too. Do, we think so, too. We do. We do. Time, a lot yeah. of information. <laughs> yeah, the, um... So what is your pleasure, members? I'd say leave it as it is and store as much stuff as you can in the... In, in the that, bathroom, yeah. you got to put a doorway in there somehow. Yep. Uh, yes, I've been in discussion with historic maintenance staff yeah. in terms of the installation of a right. door yeah. for locking. Yeah. In the well, installation, not insulation. I'm sorry. Okay. Yes, <laughs> yeah. that's important too. Um, the installation of a uh, door to fit that historic door frame um, that could be locked and secured. Sure. Yeah. Um, a window could be installed. Uh, 
that's a great idea. My initial idea was um, a lot of museums will do um, as a revenue generator uh, behind the scenes tours. Sure. So yeah. for a good yeah. earned revenue for yeah. a new tour uh, of you know behind the scenes. Yeah. Um. So that's and then basically I would we would get UV. Ask me. I don't know why I said it like that. UV uh, light blockers and window shades or covers for those um, windows and basically just keep up the hurricane shutters um, oh. on those exterior then, windows oh, wind mm -hmm. to better protect. proof the windows because you can see daylight under every single one of those windows. Yeah. Yes. And if you lock the door, you're losing AC. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Right. And to better regulate the humidity and temperature. Yeah. You can steal Frankie's door and his, his is a half door. Like a, oh. Yeah. A half door could be cool <laughs> with a glass. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So we would use we would move the kiosks out, correct? No, uh, I would leave them in there for uh, now. Would you? But I think the whole process with putting them in there and having someone come in and doing their work, oh, and keeping probably it need there, space, I see I if we think. have room for that. Yeah, everything would have to be removed to fit everything and have actual workspace. Yeah, that's so the kiosk, the puzzles, and the the stations with the magnifying glass and the sink. Not the the tub would stay to get everything. The tub's heavy. But then it would not ever. Be and then would it ever be a bathroom again? I mean, the town did restore it for about 50 years. It was two bathrooms. So what you're looking at is actually not the original. It's highly been modified. Mrs. Long had that as two separate bathrooms for her bedroom and the guest bathroom. So the room itself has already been significantly altered by the town in the initial exhibit of a bathroom slash well, Jack, Jack Delisle's yeah. bathroom. Yeah. He's yeah. the one that made it large. Yeah, so it's an exhibit about archaeology slash historic photographs slash Jack Delisle slash it's a bathroom. Right. Um, right. So. Um, Iterations. Yes. <laughs> uh, that being said, the, in, the removal of those objects and the use of collections and self-storage or self-storage, um, self-standing shelving units would cost less damage to the overall historical mm. integrity than what's already been done when the museum was opened. Oh, okay. So I was there when the plumber yes. came in. He said, I was, I took, we put this bathroom in, he said. I was 14 with my dad. Whoa. Uh, plumber on the beach. Uh, Record. Yep, Record. Oh, right. Young yes. was, yeah. was there with his dad and yep. he Ted, said, Ted, Ted, John, Ted, John. No, it was Ted. Ted. He came with his wife and went there. He said, I was here. Mm -hmm. Wow. Oh, it was fun. Wow. And he said, we put a wall in and we did this and there was a half bath underneath and they walked through and. Yeah, yeah. It made a lot more sense that way. Yeah, there was a walkthrough back there. Yeah, mm -hmm. and a half bath where the window is mm -hmm. at the bottom of the stairs. All right, so for the yeah. purpose of starting yeah. this meeting, because it's yes. after five, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> yes. Yes. and yes. we do need to get going, um, I want some recommendations from other board members as, as to how you would like to proceed. Oof. Betty? It's, it's well, so I like up the, in the air. The idea of having something at town hall, uh, at the new town hall, if that's going to go through. And it looks like there's a pretty good possibility. I, 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 think, I think there's a very good possibility it could become the new town hall. Whether there's room or not, I think is still yet to be determined. But it's a pretty significant facility. Right, yeah. right. So, uh, I mean, this isn't something that we have to do today. Well, apparently it's, 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 we'll, it, I, it, we I'm kind of feeling it's that it is. I'm kind of sensing that this new get, staff guess, person is coming on board and, you know, the artifacts are there and she's here mm -hmm. and the room's there. And, you well, know, if they shift all of that around over the next month during this coming month with labor and no expense to the town, that um, that can happen. I mean, so... That would require a vote from CELCAB, which then, by the way, would need to go to council for a final approval that that right. is the intent of the town to move those artifacts into the into um, the Mount House. So that would be in the form of a vote here if that is what you all And I, I would just say, as you all know, the town council is going to given the expertise on this particular advisory committee, the town is going to defer to whatever you recommend on this. I'm, okay. I can guarantee that. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for that. Does it have to be an agenda item in order to vote on it? 
Well, it's not so, it's not appropriate, but you know, it's not that it hasn't been done in the past. And, and the other thing is, we are not absolutely wedded to third Thursday or fourth, whatever Thursday no. we are on. So, if once we get this isn't imminent or necessary until we hire somebody, is that correct? And I, then, I initially planned for this to be done in June or July. I love it. Okay, and so here's the other thing. Then we we did we had to do this before. When, when Synergy was working on the exhibits, we were meeting every yes. other week. Yeah, we did. Mm -hmm. It wasn't did. just once a month. We were meeting every other week because mm -hmm. these were decisions that had to right. be presented, sifted through, analyzed, yep. Yep. Immediate, yada, right. yada, Immediate, yep. and yes. then voted on. So exactly. I, I'm advocating for maybe tabling this discussion yes. until we've had a chance to really absorb um, our opinion about it. And then maybe we have another meeting in two weeks. And so if we vote to say yes, then you will be able to get all that stuff done before June. And, and I think, to your point, I think, and I'm not, I'm not the town attorney, but I, I would think that you'll still be on the same timeline because if, if, if you all, if this committee makes this decision, this seems to me like a, an internal sort of directional policy decision. I don't think it has to go to the council, quite honestly. Okay. I wouldn't think so. I yeah. think it would be okay. with yeah. their recommendation, yeah. staff. Yeah. Yeah. And then staffs. a report from staff. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay. Well, it's, it's always been that we are in the position of making decisions for the town. We are in the position of making recommendations for which that the town... But, but Barbara, you're underestimating your gravitas. <laughs> <laughs> no, honey, we're just being <laughs> black. <laughs> Heard that. Heard that. <laughs> did I put a little southern twang in there? <laughs> you did. <laughs> All right. So if it's okay with everybody, maybe we can meet again uh, in a couple of weeks and we can um, uh, put that down as a board vote, uh, an you action. Can check your calendar um, because... And we'll look at our calendar to see what else can, or maybe Jeff can get back to us as to when we can meet again. Okay. I guess okay. whatever's convenient for you all that might work in your schedule which is certainly much more well and adam's going all over the county yeah. wonderfully yeah. i mean really seriously mm -hmm. doing outreach all over and yeah. that's yeah, important that's great. Yeah. Oh, thank you so how does the uh 12th or the 11th on a thursday sorry that will not work for me. <laughs> me either i would have to call in if i did that I'll be out of the state. Oh, okay. What? What? Speak to me. Tell me what works. Not anyone fun. Minnesota's great. It is. It'll be at a hockey tournament. July. Well, it'll be exciting. I'll be here. I've got company all April. So. Um. It'll be here. So I'll be here. I mean, you guys do, or not you guys, some of you have friends of Mount House meeting on Monday the that 15th. That can be changed. But if you're already on island, it That's might true. be a good That's time. That's true. Now, together. our next meeting is on the 25th. So, um, I mean, so if you want to push it, we can um, just meet again on the 25th, which is our scheduled meeting mm -hmm. next uh, Thursday. And since since if, you don't have to go to council, maybe that would still work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. if, if that's right. That yeah, would be fine if, if we relegated the opportunity of making that call, then um, we can then do it on the 25th. And I'll because be Because then here. you will be here. I okay. will be here no matter what okay. for you. Okay. Very good. Okay. Rather than do a, uh, and, and we're, we're only talking about now moving the artifacts from the colonial storage to the bathroom area and reconfiguring that to hold the artifacts and that's all we're going to be voting on for that particular thing. The issue of the living room is still sort of up for grabs at, at the moment, but let's, yes. Barbara, I'm sorry. Um, the 25th is the only meeting I would be at a convention in Las Vegas. Okay. Well, um, we'll miss you. I could do it. <laughs> well, I know this is so important to you guys, but I just want to make sure you guys are okay because this yes. is very important to you more than you guys have to educate me. Oh, it's important me. to you. No, it is. <laughs> I'm saying you guys are much more knowledgeable of this than I ever thought about. We have to be conscious of that because if Pat's yeah, not going to be here, be we need a quarum. So Yeah, yeah, yeah. be careful Pat's of what committee you want to serve on. Is he? Okay. <laughs> I, I thought so. So maybe check and make sure that the quorum will work. And okay. I, just I, could, yeah, I could be here the 22nd and 23rd, but I just leave for Vegas on the 24th. 
for a convention. Okay, so we'll look at those dates and, and Jeff will get back to us, but we still have the 25th at our regularly mm -hmm. scheduled yeah. meeting. Okay, let's go, let's move forward and finish up this meeting if we can. The roof update, and this is not a happy topic. It is. The thing was leaking. It, hmm? it is. It's a happy update. Oh, <laughs> tell me. So we were working with Crowther. You know, it was some things with the materials. They couldn't yeah. find the right stuff that we wanted as far as a historic building. That's, that's the holdup sure. for us. Um, now that they have everything secured, they're starting uh, next Monday, right? Oh, wow. Oh, First really? and the second. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So Monday and Tuesday. Monday and Tuesday. Tuesday, it should Fantastic. be done. Should be done. Yep. Ooh, so it wasn't yeah. that we were dragging our feet no, or it was no, a holdup or it was a back burner. We were just waiting on materials. We had many conversations with them about, oh, they don't have this material. Can we do this one? Let's do some research with our people. Can we use this as a historic structure? Yes, we can. And then it, it finally came back to we got what we wanted. It's going to work for everyone. And, and you have a good roofing That's contractor great. to do it. Crowther. Yep. Crowther. Oh, perfect. Yeah, okay. They're great. Okay. Yep. Well, that is an excellent report. Good. Okay. I'm going to go fa really fast through this, you guys. Uh, member items, be kind. You want to start, um, Carrie? Um, I, um, I love everything we've done today so far. I'm very excited about, um, I'm very interested to have you guys educate me on like moving things like that because I'm not educated at all on that. That's what I meant by that. I don't, not, but um, I think that everything was really good today. I think it was a productive meeting. It was a little long, but I think it's great. Okay. Thank you. I love it all. Good. Nothing to report? No. Anything to report? Um, Member items? Not really. Yeah. Not, I don't nothing. Either. Just to okay. thank, yep. just to thank yep. Adam and tell him he's done you a fantastic yeah. job. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Thank you for all that. Help uh, it up. goes. <laughs> <laughs> a lot to take in. Meeting. Yeah, and the thought that he puts behind everything is, yep. is well thought out and well read and exactly. Like, yeah. So, uh, any job. further comment from the public? Is there any opportunity for one last opportunity for you Yay. to speak? Yeah, guys, and uh, Mike Funk, 115th Street View Avenue, and I know um, you guys have had a long day here, and I don't mean to belabor it. I wasn't going to bring this issue up, but I'm going to blame it on Jeff because he made the reference to the current state of Newton Park. Um, I'm the guy, and I'm confessing, so hopefully my friends at Whitecaps and Ocean Harbor aren't going to be looking for me this afternoon on my way home. I called yesterday because of safety concerns on Newton Park, and um, the big dump truck that was running down the beach at high speeds and jumping the seawall, I hear you say it's not going to be a problem, Jeff, but I guarantee you that new seawall that was put in just before Ian will be destroyed with that big truck. They're not doing anything to distribute the weight. And yesterday, he was going anywhere from 15 to 20 miles an hour up and down the beach. The beach was crowded. I have an 85-year-old mother who I walk every day on the beach. The ruts in the oh access oh were, you know, 12 to 18 inches deep. Oh she almost fell, which precipitated my calling. It took me several hours to get a hold of anybody at the town who could even address the safety issue. I finally got a hold of Frankie. Frankie was going to take care of it and call me this morning. I woke up this morning, and the whole entire Newton Park is fenced off without any access. So I took an extreme measure. And I had a little set in this morning. Now, I can't find a police officer or a sheriff from Lee County when I try to go across the crosswalks and almost get knocked down or run over. <laughs> and then two days ago, I was walking up to Publix and there was a four wheeler coming right at me on the sidewalk. Oh. Yeah. Now, it was either a construction worker in a vest, safety vest, or it was the town. The town denies it, but it was a camouflage and I've seen camouflage trucks. Yeah, yeah we don't have any camouflage. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They just keep going. So anyways, but lo and behold, they were able to dispatch three cars with officers <laughs> to lock up a nice guy who is a law abiding citizen because he was having a set in and stopping the back and forth truck movement this morning. So I was I, I then called. Yeah, you missed it because it was quite the show because I called and demanded since nobody from the town had come down and even looked at the situation. I demanded that Andy and Frankie, and they brought their safety guy, and I'll get into that in just a few minutes, come down there and us have a discussion about the situation. So they did come down. This thing sort of escalated and transpired. I was standing with my aluminum small beach chair leaning against my legs. Now we'll all admit it was a little windy this morning. 
my chair blows over into and falls over into this safety guy, whoever he is. I didn't get his name. And he proceeds to say, don't hit me again with your chair. Oops. Oh. And I say, are you kidding me? You know the wind blew that over. I turn around and look at Andy, and Andy says, I saw your chair hit him. Now, the goon squad, as I call it, because that's what it was, it was a police state, it was an authoritarian government movement, and I'm not going to have it. So Monday, I'm struggling right now. Andy did call this afternoon and apologized. But I'm struggling right now on if I'm calling for his resignation at Monday's town council meeting. Because that was a character flaw that is a lot bigger than just a, oops, I'm sorry, kind of a situation. But my point is, there is a solution to the beach. And it's not to cut down and completely close that access. And that's going to lead into Greg's conversation. If you look at the flow of traffic, the wall is now up back at Ocean Harbor. The flow of traffic is now through that gate again, mm -hmm. down Strandview Avenue, where the beach access crossing is. And straight. And straight ahead. Yes, that's true. You cannot make that the truck entrance. You mm -hmm. have got to move it. Point. They're going in and out down there at mm -hmm. that other end. And I've suggested, hey, why don't you just run that orange fence, keep this open, I said, why don't you have the truck go down the road? Because quite honestly, he's going out of sight north on the beach to dump his sand. And there's no reason he shouldn't be going down the road and across the beach access at the appropriate point. But they tell me that that can't go on the road. Now, maybe that's true. Maybe that's not true. I don't know anymore. And I said, okay, that's fine. He can, you can still move his access down a little bit further and he can come out onto the beach. He certainly has got to slow down. Today, they put a vehicle in front of him. They tell me it was there every day, but I tell you, it wasn't there yesterday. And there is nobody on site. I was told today they now have a supervisor on site full time. Well, I went over there to say, hey, you don't have a silt barrier up. Sand's blowing everywhere. If it's the active construction site you keep referring to, code requires a silt barrier. There was no supervisor on the, on the, on the lot. So, again... I'll let Greg finish up with your all's discussion about your proposal for the temporary, but you've got to open that access up because that's where the flow is. I watch people all day today. They got halfway down that access and they were told to go back. Now they were a little more compliant because I wasn't. I just keep right on walking because I'm not having anybody turn me around. You can't come in on public. Oh, okay, sorry. So that was my morning. I'm not happy. It's shameful. And especially, you know, it, it grew for me, it became bigger than the issue because of what Andy did mm -hmm. and the goon squad, because they all were locked. And, you know, I was the bad guy. I was a little bit ashamed and quite honestly, quite astounded at the behavior. Greg. Uh, again, Greg Miller, 115 Strandview Avenue. Uh, thanks, first of all, for the work you all do. Uh, it's very important, and thanks for allowing us the opportunity to participate by listening live and seeing live what you do and speaking to you as well about it. Uh, thanks again for the copy of this. That, that was very helpful for us to visualize it. Uh, absolutely. You know the logistics of the plumbing and the electric with the bathrooms and whatnot. Uh, having them right there on Estero and especially at that bus stop, wow, what a disaster it's going to be. I mean, we've been there 29 years, so we've watched Newton Park from when it was houses and the Newton House to when it was converted to Newton Park. And one of the nice things about it was it was a hidden jewel of the island. Uh, and one of the things that was hidden was the bathrooms because they were back in the center of this plot which they can't be for right now, understandably, because of the, the sand pile and the trucks working through there. But consider, if you will, and again, you know the logistics and the FEMA of it, a one-story structure for the bathrooms, uh, the outdoor shower tower like you had with the dog drink, or whatever, the foot wash off, but have the walls of it on the ground floor and just have it be a one-story ground floor structure 
be blowout walls. Yeah, I don't know if that's possible under FEMA regulations, but that way you don't have to elevate it because they're just blowout walls. Now you're going to lose the plumbing and the fixtures inside that, but you're still going to lose a lot with a hurricane, even like Charlie, much less Ian, uh, to boot. But meanwhile, that keeps that a lower profile. It keeps it kind of centered in the area. It was actually to the right of the where these trees, which are as a sand pile now, were located. Uh, and it was equally accessible from this, the parking park area and the beach area. Uh, my biggest comment is the truck access here on Strandview access. I realize you're trying to protect these folks from the noise, but believe me, with us living over here, there's not much protection from the noise going on there, but it has to be. It's a project it's, going on, and, yeah. and we back the berm at least as much as anybody else does because during Adelia, it saved a lot of properties mm -hmm. by sacrificing mm -hmm. itself. And once it gets planted up with sea oats and morning glories and whatnot that help root it down, it'll remain more in place than the last one did. But if you were to, this is the crosswalk. It's heavily, heavily used. The people from uh, Ocean Harbor all come down. This is their beach access down Strandview Avenue. They cross there and they go right out to the beach. I know you want to keep it away from these folks here, but is it not possible to, to reverse these two, have this being the trucks, and if you want to keep them a little away from their house, have them just angle in and circle back out. Meanwhile, your walkway stays the same where the established Strandview Avenue crosswalk and Strandview Avenue Street through there is located. That would be extremely valuable. Uh, but again, the, the tiki hut, there was a large tiki hut here, which was great with the tables under it. A large one located here with even more tables, which came later, and that was great. And the small ones located along the beach, a few of them were really cool. People would get out there and they could sit. Love the uh, swing set, the artistic swing set over at this end. Uh, that'd be a great addition. Uh, but if something could be done recognizing you've got to work within the state owning that property until they're done with the construction of the berm, uh, that's a little different, even if it were to move the bathrooms like you said, over here, and flip the parking, the temporary parking over here, which then would probably be expanded back more towards what it was. And also, you did have historical Newton Park signage throughout the trails, as well as plant signage about what this is that you're looking at, these natural plants throughout the trails. So there was a lot of explanation and... Uh, interesting materials for people to see as they would walk through those trails. I don't think I've left anything out. I'm excuse me. Uh, I'm going to give it. you a copy of this so you see what we... Is this that, was, he has one. Oh, you have a copy yes. of... No, no, the written, oh. the written report? Yes. He has the yes. whole packet. Oh, okay. All right. So, yes. yeah, so Thank it clearly states what... But again, you know the logistics of it. It's just some... As we've watched it come in and grow and whatnot, and, you know, Mike was the one that said, what about a ground floor? bathroom and facility but with blowout walls so would that be approved through fema uh because that way it reduces a lot of cost of the initial building of it and you don't have to have a huge structure and a huge circling ramp for ada and it's much more accessible that way and i i believe too there was just that outdoor rinse shower i don't think there was one inside there wasn't one in the men's room and kudos to the town for always keeping those bathrooms 8 a.m. open, 5 p.m. closed, and neat and clean as a pen. Anytime I was over there, they were in great shape. Water fountains were a great addition inside in between the men's and women's. Uh, I don't know if water fountains are planned for these or, or included in the long-term plan. But that's it. And thank, thank you, you again. Much. And thank you for all your work on this. Thank you. Uh, just some suggestions for as we move forward with the temporary bathrooms. We're, we're doing our best. Plan. All right. Okay. Uh, hey, thank um, thank I, may I have a vote to, uh, to adjourn? Turn. Thank you, Becky. I second. second. That. Thank you, Carrie. <laughs> thank